I, I've been, I, I just broke Phil's heart that during sucks. the intro. That's awesome. That's everything I want. Yeah. I love that fucking idea. I love the concept of just like slap dashing some fucking rhythm game aesthetic or, or like gameplay thing to anything. Yeah. To anything. Put it in RTS. I don't give a fuck. I think we should take the Gears of War active reload system to the next level. (laughs) Where in order to reload, Marcus or Marissa Phoenix or whatever her name is. Yeah. She's got to she's got to bust some moves if she wants to get that that perfectly timed reload. I'm now gonna turn that down. Now I don't know how multiplayer is gonna work with that, with with you know the dropped inputs and everything, <laughs> but um, but no. I like the idea. You know what's worse is that we probably shouldn't have done that because the entirety of her fucking storyline is that she's dealing with PTSD. So maybe she just lost. You just got to dan- yeah, dance it out. Got it. <laughs> yeah, dance it out. You know, she lost it. What's the? I'm trying to think of the the one that I don't like. The DDR machine that's not DDR. You don't like pump. It's pump is the diagonal. Yeah, the where diagonal it's up left, up right, center, and then the cor- It's the corners and the yeah. Center. Where you just. Hey, bow-legged people, I hope you enjoy this fucking version of yeah. DDR. I hope you like stretching. <laughs> it's yeah. And it's, uh, it's, and it's, it, none of the music is anywhere near as good either. I tried... DDR has original tunes. We haven't done a DDR theme for the podcast because there's too many options for songs. Yeah, but you also, I mean, the, uh, the one thing that you're going to come back to every time is Max. It literally, it literally is like the most, the one that makes the most sense. Yeah, but... But like all of Naoki's music, <sighs> all right, is super good. Yeah, do you do Butterfly? I'm a speed over Beethoven kind of guy. You could do Captain Jack, even though Captain Jack would definitely probably get cannot us do good Captain yeah. Jack. No, mm-hmm. definitely not. Little boy, I am a little <laughs> boy. <laughs> Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Not Another Podcast. I'm with my boy that, man, I, you know, we live together. Yep, you I wouldn't think. Him, I don't get to see him as much. I wake up, I, it's mainly my fault this week because I've been a sleepy boy. Yep. I've passed out. Anytime Max is gone, oh, yeah, I'm just going to take care of the stream tonight. I was like, thank you. Yeah. And I would just go into my room and die. Yeah. <laughs> I, was like, I was like, hey, Phil, are you streaming tonight? To snores. And I'm like, Okay. <laughs> So I'll be continuing bully. Here we go. <laughs> that's always that's probably my favorite bit that never gets old is the people who come in. They're like, hey, Phil, it's been a while since I've been here. And it's like, uh, yeah, you know, I've changed a whole lot. <laughs> I'm practically a different person. <laughs> um, I feel so bad. But hey, the, the, the stream of the night got a... Uh, we, we went international again. Yes. That's pretty cool. Um, and we'll, that, that flows pretty well uh, into what I've been doing. Yeah. Um, so... On stream, we started up a game called Toho Luna Nights, which is a, it's not a mainline Toho game, because those are only bullet hells, and those only look jank as shit. Yep. This is a very well-made, uh, I'm going to just call it, it's it's Symphony of the Night, where stopping time is the whole mechanic. Um, it's, it's not a very long game. Castlevania Bad Apple. It's Castlevania Bad Apple, mm-hmm. um, which means that you get all the great fucking toho songs in there uh every upgrade you get is more dumb time shit where like the first thing you get is the ability to stop time after that it's like okay you get a double jump by throwing two knives below you and then after that you can stand on your knives so you end up having these rooms that you're platforming across while dodging things that can move in the stop time by throwing knives out and then running along the knives and then I won't talk about it too much because again, it's it's not a it's not a crazy deep game, and we are still kind of playing through it, so I haven't finished it yet. Right. Um, but the moment I knew this game was something really really cool is there's a fight on a bridge, and over like a, a river, and during the fight, the boss will you know throw projectiles at you because all the boss fights are bullet hells. Like you're actually dodging bullets and like grazing alongside them to regain your like MP and your health. But sometimes the bullets will hit the water, and the water will, like, splash up. And there's a point in time where I had, like, you're supposed to stop time, jump over, and then attack behind their shield while they're right. frozen. And I jumped up with, like, five seconds left of being able to stop time, and I couldn't get past her. And that's because when the bullet hit the water, the droplets had come up, 
and it's all like it's not like caked in like this is just the physics like happening and because i stopped time the water formed a wall around her that i couldn't get through because there are sections of the game where you're like causing splashes to like make the water turn into like ramps so you can get up higher and then you stop time to run across it and like it's a cool little game it's a very cool little game how is it that like indie games and stuff like that will just low-key have the best mechanics of all time yeah. and like triple-a companies still can't fucking figure it out like this like like 300 man teams that that are, are are just incapable of like making fucking anything like time travel or time stopping feel yeah. good there's been one titanfall that was it yeah and that was not even like time stop that's yeah. just time that's travel just map switch yeah the map so. Which is very cool, not to discount that. But uh, yeah, no, cool little game. I think it's like 17 bucks, and it's coming to the Switch soon. So all you people who only play things if they're on the Switch, it's it's coming to that. Very fun. There's a lot of people like that. Um, yeah. There's a lot of people who just refuse to buy games that aren't. Anymore. Yeah. Like, you, I won't buy it unless it's on the Switch. And it's not even like a situation of like, I just want more stuff to play. It's not like a am fiending. Because uh, right now they I'm... Don't play anywhere else. Because right now I'm like fiending for things to buy on my Switch. But, like, things that I can only buy on my Switch that are improved by the Switch. Right. Um, and had I not played this game before and I saw it on sale on the Switch, yeah, I'd probably pick it up on that, you know. But I don't... The portable thing doesn't appeal to me, and we've had that discussion. Mm -hmm. um, aside from that, Evo just happened, and we were going to breeze through that because I've been talking about it all week. But I've basically played over the last week every fighting, every modern day fighting game that is out right now. I've gone down the entire line, revisited everything. Uh, if the characters aren't released for these games yet, the balance patches at least are. And just, it's been nice to just sit down and play a lot of fighting games again. Sometimes with you guys, sometimes by myself. Um, and no, I've been, been having a good time getting back into it. Uh, one especially that I want to put more time into, but unfortunately, it's a game who I, I'm gonna have to like do the join a Discord and ask people for matches kind of thing. Oh, which is the only reason I kind of stopped playing it. But we'll we'll get to that way way later. Um, but other than that, haven't really been playing too too much else. I'm gonna probably start up Bloodstained on my own pretty soon because I put out a poll. And I'm like, hey, do you guys want to see me stream Bloodstained? And no one mentioned that you had done it. Well, and I forgot. Well, the thing so... is, is that I, I played Bloodstain for two days. Yeah. And no one showed up. Yeah. Because everyone was playing Bloodstained. So, oh, so is that why? It's because Bloodstained is a 60-hour game. Yeah. Like, it's like it's an insanely long fucking game. Well, I wouldn't say 60, but, like, for, for that type of game, it's, it's long it's for that kind really of game. long. And the play style is very old school in the sense that a lot of people do that thing where in order to level up like your your beasties or your shards or anything like that, you have to keep killing that enemy that drops that shard. It's so one they of do those. Yeah. So mm -hmm. it's old so it's old school. So it's like, you know, uh well not even old school, like uh, that that happened in Aria of Sorrow, I wanna say. Where you would kill an enemy a number of times to get that uh, I mean, that, that thing going, which I don't I don't ever see the point in grinding in a game like Castlevania. Yeah, that doesn't well. make sense to me. I had always beaten it and had fun with it, regardless of whether or not I was grinding the shit out of a section. Yeah. Uh, so the fact that so many people like you could not like it was actually aggravating to watch Bloodstained streams for a little while. Because it was just people going in and out of. I did like, see rooms. the 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 dashing back and forth yeah. between rooms. I don't personally mind that kind of stuff, but I fully understand it doesn't make for good stream content. So I'm going to save that one for me. We're going to do that. Yeah, um, that's what I've that's what I've pretty much uh, decided as well. Yeah. People will watch you play Symphony tonight. Yeah, Bloodstain's a little too fresh I'm, right now. I'm I'm working my way up to the actual Castlevania game. We're getting mm. there. I'm getting more comfortable with this genre. It's not as scary to me anymore. Yeah. Um, but we'll probably finish Toho either not tomorrow because I work from 11 p.m. to 3 a.m. <laughs> Word up. Uh, probably Sunday we'll finish that. We're like last last level and then last boss. Yeah. Um, but after that, I I don't remember what I said we were doing, so I'm not gonna say anything. Uh, as far as watching goes, uh, really nothing, really nothing. I I mom just, anime. 
just today. We'll, Mamalia, but we'll go. We over haven't that. caught up. No, we haven't caught since up. But not we even watch since it. the last stream. Oh, really? This is the last podcast. We haven't. We haven't. We have gained. We maybe watched well, we one breeze, episode. We got to breeze through this and. I was going to say. I was almost going to say. Let's just leave it on during the podcast on mute, <laughs> and we'll just report live it's as like, it happens. We're, um, we're waiting. We're waiting. Have they sexualized the small one yet? No. Keep it going. We're still. We're good. Let's go. We're, we're good. We're, we're, we're still good. in there. We're still in. We're there. still in there in the sense that we're not in there. Yeah. <laughs> which is good. It's the opposite of that tweet I saw earlier. Do not get in yeah. that ass. Don't. Avoid, Don't. avoid ass. Avoid ass at all costs. Yeah. It's the sign. It's the red circle with a line through it. And it's lolly ass. Ravioli, avoid. ravioli. Don't loot any lolly. <laughs> oh, God. Um, yeah, still watching Doctor... I caught up on Doctor Stone and Fire Force today. Um, still good. But other than that, haven't been watching fucking anything. And I haven't been listening to, like, anything. There's Okay, no. I've been listening to... The 30 seconds of the new Guilty Gear theme. That is bullshit That is, like, and uh, you know what? I've seen that trailer enough times to add it into my watching because it's literally gotten to the point where if I see the t- the picture of Kai with his back turned and soul, like the photo they use for all the articles, I'm like, fuck, I have to watch it again. I have to watch it again now. Yeah. Right now, twice. Mm-hmm. So I've seen, like, a feature length of that trailer just loop it loop it and inject it right into my veins yeah, that's um, that's how i actually felt with uh two trailers for me recently yeah the death stranding trailer and the final fantasy 7 stuff yeah the final fantasy 7 stuff i actually really go i go back and i watch the max reactions because i just i love how wholesome that i love how he's basically part of the dev team now yeah that's it yeah he's a cheerleader he's a cheerleader and i thought that it was fantastic it's that's the kind of shit where you hear about it and you're like you you wish that happens for you right like that's that's something you're just like oh that would be amazing if the dev team of your favorite game goes you are the reason we get up in the morning and yeah. go daisuke ishiwatari calls up and he said when phil said ravioli ravioli <laughs> don't loot any lowly the whole that studio, shit really hit the whole <laughs> studio in uproarious applause this is why we make games. <laughs> so that one day we can get that Twitch stream where the chat can watch the mom isekai Fuck. with the with the boys, with the hipsters. I forgot that uh, I was going to say, Guilty Gear hasn't looted a lowly. And then I, re- well, no, they haven't looted, looted May anyway. No. They just, the they, jelly- they make it pretty obvious that Johnny's really strange. For all the, the jokes you can make about the jellyfish pirates, it's really a pretty wholesome operation. As, like, for right now. There's, He's I, just saving orphans. Yeah, I don't, I don't dig and on fucking. And twenty. I don't. So. Di- well, okay, yeah. He's just really short. Yeah, that's fine. Those yeah. exist. Yeah, short people. <laughs> You're right. You are correct, Phil. Wait, that's not true. What? I did watch something, and this is new content for the podcast. Oh my fucking god! And I will bring it up again. Oh. Uh. Not Tell for me about Wife Swap. Okay, so again, just I was at the office yesterday at work, and there was like three hours before we could actually start working on what we needed to work on. Yeah. And our boss watches the trashiest shit I've ever seen in my life. It's it's the, it's your teen moms, it's your catfished. But today it was white, or that day it was Wife Swap, and three hours, six dudes were enthralled, practically speechless. And I don't, I, I'm, you know what, unlike on stream, I'm not going to say anything. J- please seek out season four, episode 18, The Goat. You'll know it's the right episode if one of the families are a traveling dirt bike stunt team, and then the other family, the mom's an artist and an abuser. And just, just watch that one episode, find some people. Mwah. It's, it's the trashiest thing I've ever seen, but my God, does it have some incredible moments? We got to sit down. You and I got to go over some Amish Mafia, because I got to yeah. tell you that is some next level shit. Like, there's we got we got to get Hulu or or like one cable channel. Just like, hey, can you guys give us just TLC? Yeah. What? 
Yeah, no, we, we don't want anything. Can we just pay? We need TLC with Lifetime on the weekends. Right. That's it. Yeah. That's literally it. Do you want the Hallmark Channel too? Don't fucking patronize me. Don't. No. No. <laughs> I buy those you. on DVD when they come out, okay? I don't need that oh, shit. God. I go to the store. Go to the Hallmark, or Hallmark store for that. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I, I was... Uh, the description that Max had given to me about the whole episode, you guys can find it if you check out, uh, what game are you playing? Sam Show? I yeah, think it was, it was a VOD. Sam Show VOD, which will Show most VOD. likely be deleted by the time you listen to this. Though based on our analytics, you didn't get this far. <laughs> hey, whatever. But the one person who did, you alone get the wife swap hidden tech. Yeah. That is Good for season you. four, episode 18. God 18. bless you guys. God That's right. We out here. We grinding. Yeah. You know that they're watching that episode while they're working on Soul Bad Guys fucking <laughs> on his tweens, you know? <laughs> God damn it, dude. Oh, man. That's it, though. I haven't been doing much else. Okay. It's been, been a slow, slow couple of weeks. Yeah, I'd say the same for me in terms of playing. I actually just uh, played a game before uh, the stream just to kind of have something else other than fucking Final Fantasy. Final Fantasy has taken over my life. I know. Uh, I've actually fallen so deep into the hole I don't know how to get out. And I think it's worse it's because... Easy. I'll just unplug your your line. No, don't do that. Okay. Don't fucking... Well, I'll do it mid-match on you. I don't care. Then, that's fine. My track record's clean. One disconnect's not going to kill me. Not if I keep doing it. That's I'm nice. closer. That's not nice. Yeah, well, it's not nice to disconnect I'm me. I'm faster. It doesn't matter. I'm closer. I'll jump the couch. You've seen me do it unsuccessfully. But yeah, one of no. these days, I might be no, able to. No, no. I might get the height. I love you, man. But you, you'll you jump the couch and hurt yourself. Like, don't do that. Yeah, and then you'll <laughs> feel bad. You won't plug my unplug my cable anymore. Oh, that's the tech. The nanny boo the the tech. Tech, yeah. tech comes back. Yeah, it's that you didn't win you as didn't I'm being carted off to the ambulance. This man uh, is playing Blaze Blue Cross Tech on the Switch in the back of the ambulance fan. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I, I think what it is is that, you know, shout outs to Matt and Josh and Luke and everybody from the uh, Discord, the Kusoge, Sunset, whatever they want to call themselves, boys. No. Uh, yeah, I just getting actually into a, a situation where not, e- not even like a full group, but enough people to where like it's uh, enjoyable. Um. Yeah, playing MMOs with your friends is great. Who'd have thought? Nah. Who'd, you, who'd have thunk it? That's why they put in robots to be your friends, right? Yeah, for sure. And uh, the the weird thing is that we haven't had like a story update in so long, but we've been having uh, you know, updates to the Eden, which is the core raid progression and stuff like that. Right now, we're in the middle of Savage. I wanted to do Savage progression. We did Savage progression on Tuesday. I want to say Monday or Tuesday. I wanted to do it again. Passed out. Yeah. Died. So, you know, hopefully sometime this week we'll actually do some kind of rated or some savage progression. I was going to be pumped about it this weekend, but this weekend is AFO. So that's probably not going to happen. Um, yeah. 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 I, I've been just I'll probably, it's probably going to be the same way that I'm going to approach PSO2 when it finally drops in North America because that, that span of time where I was like, Okay, this is the one game I'm playing every single day, which is not great if you decide to try to sell yourself as a variety streamer. No. Mm-hmm. Is it just you get fucking just sideways and you're like, oh, okay, I'll just I'll just play a little bit. Like the whole time I'm playing Bully, like it's a great game. But all, and you the can whole, think all about I'm thinking of is like I just is need, if, I need if one he just of gear tonight. if he just had like a robot friend that I had <laughs> on a global cooldown. Yeah. If Bully had global cooldowns. Yeah, and I just had a drill that we could uh, pierce butts. Yeah. It'd be good. Not in Bully. No, don't pierce butts in Bully. Yeah. That's a fucking. I've been playing Bully. Well, you can leave thumbtacks on a chair. That's a Bully thing to do. Yeah, that's a pretty Bully thing I've, to do. I've seen that happen mm-hmm. in real life. It was. Not as funny as you'd think. No. And not as climactic as you'd think either. No. All of these jokes, are like these pranks that are actually... Yeah. People don't understand. Like, throwing marbles and slipping on marbles, you you can hit the ground really hard. In Bully, you play as the bad guy. <laughs> Fancy that. A rock star game where you're not a good person. That's true. Who'd have I, thought? They've only made one. What was that? Space Station Silicon Valley. Fuck off. That wasn't them. 
Rockstar it's, or Take Two? Take Two. That's different formerly people. Formerly known as. They're still owned by Take Two, so it's all the same guys. No, it's not. I'm sure it is. I'm sure there's at least one name that carries over between space. I'm sure the Silicon goons Valley. might. The goons might make you think it's one. Is it guy. the same goon? No, it's well. He's multiplied. <laughs> he's become other goons. No, he just becomes a bigger goon. He's like. So is it? So is it uh, bigger or more? Bigger. Or can he it's, do There's both? more goon in the goon. It's a more bigger. But goon. can he like let more goons go? Because like, I feel like just one goon, a big goon, sure, but like it's like a shadow. It's it's the shadow goon no jutsu, and it's, he splits up, and they all maintain their own memories, and then when they they all go back together, he maintains the memories of the goons of the shadow goons. I want you to know that you you you're just bringing up the way that Agent Smith works in the Matrix. I want you to know. This. I'm 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 aware. Yes. <laughs> oh man. But we'll get we'll get to that as well. Yeah. There's a lot of news today. So I, uh, there's one game I ended up playing, and it was right now. Yes. I, I didn't know, because it's so weird, because they have there hasn't been anything, like, in terms of news, like, English-wise coming out on it. Yeah. But there's been several videos being released of Onanaki. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I finally, I was like, oh, it's a demo. And the demo is apparently the just the beginning, to the point where it's like, this is a chunk of the game. If you buy the full game, you, you just continue, continue on, yeah. which is great. A lot of Japanese games are doing that now. It's nice. Yeah, it's very nice. Um, as a concept, crazy. Nuts. Yeah. Uh, I don't know how much you know about it. Uh, less and less as time goes on. So basically, in this world, when somebody dies, they explicitly tell you, like, it starts off with the main character as a kid, and his parents go, go bye-bye. Yeah. And they go, he goes, you can't be sad, because if you're sad, then they don't get to come back. So if if uh, if uh, if someone on the real world is sad for the spirits that are these people are leaving, yeah. as spirits, they lose their way and don't get to reincarnate. So death is closely tied. That is death a, and life that's a is, Japanese folk tale that yeah, was told at some point some around point, some campfire. Yeah. So so basically, the idea is that yeah, there's these uh, crew of people. They're not Reapers. They're called the Watchers. And the idea is that they kind of operate like Reapers in some sense. Um, where they are... It's more, that's more like Yuna from Final Fantasy X. Sure. Where the sending is, you know, d- done to send, you know, souls back to, the, like, their appropriate place so they don't become fiends. It's kind of the same way where it's like they don't lose their way and become like big demon yeah. monsters and shit like that. Uh, so the first mission you get as you grow up is uh, you show up and they, they kind of introduce the concept of like, okay, you can sw- you can shift between the world of the living and the world of the dead. And uh, your, your weapons are literal manifestations of older heroes that die, people who died before that just weren't weren't enough to like become fiends but also didn't get reincarnated they're stuck in between Mm -hmm. because of some shit that happened but you can just use their sick powers like uh the first one you get is a samurai girl the second one is the uh like a dragoon dude cool uh and And yeah that's your your weapon yeah and Mm -hmm. your first mission with your uh, childhood friend is to go ahead and find this young kid spirit that's been wandering around and uh, you find him, and he's and he's like, okay, we need to make sure, like, we need to find whatever is holding you to this world, and you know, make sure that you pass on. Mm-hmm. He's like, I just really want to say goodbye to my parents. Like, I, you know, I can't. I really want to go see him, and he's like, okay. By the way, the guy who you play is a complete and utter dickhead. Okay. Super big dickhead. Not that young. He'll do shit, and then go. I told you it was a fucking bad idea, and and like the uh, the childhood friend's of, like, are you fucking? Ki- he's one seriously? of those guys. Yeah. yeah, I'm, yeah. So so the fucking kid goes up. They go up. They find the kid, and they're like, hey, um, you need to get the fuck out of here. And he goes, but I want to see my mom and dad. And he's like, I was bad for. I don't know about this. He's like, no, 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 it's cool. I just want just for like a second. And they're like, okay. So you walk him over to to their house. And you knock on their fucking door, and you're like, "Yo, we need to talk to you about your dead son." And they're like, "And your, your childhood friend's like, well, how about you fucking knock it back a peg about or two? About hi, yeah. 
Like, You're, relax. This is my name. It's good to meet you. So the whole time, you know, the they're, like, talking and having a conversation. The little kid's right next to them. Kid starts fucking blabbering, like, blubbering, like, crying. And he's like, I want to go home. I want to go home. And dead ass. Like, this motherfucker turns to, to Myra, who is the, the childhood friend. I'll give her her name yeah. now. Uh, and he's and he's like, I told you this was a bad fucking idea. And she's like, what? <laughs> and, he, and not even kidding you, the mom goes, uh, well, what's wrong? And, she, and he's like, well, he's, he doesn't want to be alone. And she goes, oh, okay. Then I'm ready. And they're like, and the dad goes, what? And he's like, and he goes, uh, okay, sure, I guess. What do you mean you're and then, ready? And then they turn to you and you go, are you sure about this? And they're like, yeah. And then you just fucking kill them. Oh. <laughs> Oh, you just turn around and kill them, and he's he's saying the mantra of the this is the way of the land in in your head, oh. and you're like oh, Onanaki. And I was like, huh? So like, I was like, this is really interesting and fucked up. I love it so yeah. far, and it, it hard cuts to like a like a, just a scene of the town. Everyone's talking, and it's really like depressing. So they're talking. The first conversation you see is between two people, and they're like, "Yeah, Grandma doesn't look like she's gonna make it, so we think we're gonna pull the plug, like essentially in their universe. Yeah. But if we do it with this ceremony, then she might pass on to the afterlife and be okay." You're like, "Oh, okay, cool." The next one is like this couple, and they're like, "Oh my God, I love this. this is so great." And it goes, "Yeah, it's a charm. If you use it, if you have it, then we'll find each other in the afterlife." And then she goes, "Oh." Thanks. Like, just like oh, that. Oh, man. No, and he's like, we're just, yeah. you know, we're a thing here, but we're just ghost friends. Right. <laughs> yeah, till death do us part. <laughs> we're going to go apart. So, different clouds, man. We're yeah, going to different clouds. Different fucking clouds, brother. When uh, Jorno looks up into the sky, I'm going to be over here. <laughs> On the other side doing of Italy. Doing some other doing shit. Doing some other fucking shit. With other people that aren't yeah, you. Yeah, not you. So, uh, it kind of like culminates into the, the final thing that you see is these people called the Ark of Hope. And they're like, yeah, if you want to get guaranteed access into the afterlife, you got to join up. You know, da, 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 da. And yeah. you're like, oh, okay, this is a really weird town. So, you walk up. You go back to your HQ. And you're like talking. You see some friends. And they're all like, hey, what's up? And then your fucking like commander comes up and goes, "Shit's fucked." And you're like, "What happened?" Yeah, you know the, the clearly cl- evil cult. Yeah, that you just let go. Yeah, yeah, they had some Kool Aid. Yes, actually, I figured. Yeah, so that that evil cult, he comes up and he goes, "They killed themselves without authorization." Oh, you gotta get a permit. You gotta get a to permit die. to die. Yeah. <laughs> so he goes, "You motherfuckers, go and find out if there's any dead homies walking you, and around." Then you arrest their and ghosts. Then- <laughs> <laughs> you bring their ghosts to spirit jail. <laughs> so that's where I stopped. Is it's like you just come up and and just the thought of like. Yeah, mass suicide without permit is so fucking funny and dark and amazing to me that I'm like, I want to play more of this. How is the the playing part? So the playing part's weird. So it's an action RPG. Yeah. And um, first and foremost, the controller is bugged on PC. Okay. Uh, the, The controller prompts. Uh, I kept trying to mash A to talk to people. Turns out it's the B button. But oh. the A prompt is there. Oh. And for whatever reason, if you try to switch it to keyboard, it fucks itself even harder. So that's something I hope they fix in the main game because it's it's like not That's good. not a hard thing to fix yeah. either. Prompts. Um your attacks have a lot of weight to them. Hmm. So it's not like fast combat. It was okay. it's it's kind of like meteor combat. Like I wouldn't call it like Monster Hunter. Okay. So your go, animation locked. I was gonna, okay. So, I was going to say, go ahead and say it. What? I, it seemed like I saw not where you Dark were going Souls. down. No, okay. not Dark Souls. Definitely not. It's because it's it's definitely still like action RPG and you can do like high flying shit. Okay. Um, But it's also not like a quick switch thing. So your weapon is decided by the spear, like the daemon you're using. Yeah. And uh, the first two that you get are obviously the samurai girl and the uh, dragoon dude with the spear. Mm-hmm. And you can level them up through pretty comprehensive skill trees as you use them more. 
Um, and they also have like uh, if you, if you find new weapons and attach them to that, those weapons actually have like skills that I I'm not entirely sure. I don't, I wasn't really privy to that information mm. so far. Yeah. Uh, but I, but my mindset is it's kind of like Tales of Berseria, where it's like if you use this enough, you learn it onto your character, and it becomes a permanent buff as oh, opposed to okay. a passive buff. So it, there's like stuff here. Like there's it, stuff it, here. It looks like um, it's not like there's no combos to speak of. It's it's a straight up action RPG in the sense of like mash, 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 and then you have different skill buttons. Mm-hmm. Uh, it is actually pretty difficult. However, because some of your, like, the first boss monster you find, you're like, okay, I'm just kind of, like, going through these fucking cannon fodder really easily. Yeah. First boss monster you find is just some guy who has uh, an attack that can hit you six times. Oh, and it's okay. And six times on normal mode, you're basically dead. Uh, yeah. So it does have, unfortunately, a Dark Souls mechanic because it's got Estus Flask. Uh, so that you can only get through certain um, treasure chests in the spirit realm. So that's a thing. Uh, and also there's a different mechanics with the spirit realm. It's an interesting game. I, I'm definitely very much more into it just from the concept. Yeah. Uh, because Is it a more of a valiant effort than I Am Setsuna was? Because I've I, never I feel played like that I Am game Setsuna. Could, neither have I. I feel like that game came out and no one cared. And people played it, and they went like, "Yeah, it's good." I I like it. I like the con. I just like it conceptually better than anything that Tokyo or Tokyo Factory has done. Yeah. I think it's called uh, Tokyo RPG Factory. I, I like it better in just in terms of how it plays too. Mm-hmm. I haven't played I Am Setsuna. I think I played their other one though. I, I think remember. I Am Setsuna is like a, I, that's not turn based, is it? I thought that was like a that's tra- turn based. That's, a, that's an RPG. That's turn based, and it has the its its claim to fame was the entire soundtrack was done by piano, which uh, sounds cool at first, and you're like, oh, the entire soundtrack is just piano. Oh, okay, the percussion is <laughs> them just slapping the keys. It's like when you're playing the guitar, uh, <laughs> slapping the keys. Um, oh man. Um, uh, I mean, it sounds interesting. I'll give it a shot. I'll probably either opt for PS4 or the Switch. For a budget but... title, it's fine. It's forty five bucks. It's coming out pretty soon. Mm. I think it's the twenty seventh. But it lands way too closely to Control, which I'm also worried about because that game has Metroidvania instances. I don't know what Control is. The Remedy Shooter. They should call it something else. Yeah. There's still time. There's still to, time to reprint the boxes, you know, relabel I, the I Blu-rays. Really, yeah, I can't really. There's nothing else we could do at this point. But anyway, uh, watching uh, all we've done is watch the mom anime. We did watch about, the mom anime. That's about it. But um, that's not true because you did watch something. You're right. You watched. I watched, you watched the, a different anime. Oh man, yeah. we still. Oh fuck, we we set it up for this Saturday, and I can't do it this Saturday. Watching Fast and Furious, and neither can you. I can't from 11 p.m. to 3 a.m. <laughs> no. Fuck. Okay, because I got work tomorrow, too. Yeah. Um, so, as I have been going over time and time again, I don't think I've done it on the podcast just yet. Uh, I think we've maybe brought it up once or twice. I don't, I don't know. I can't keep up anymore. It's been a while. Uh, Fast and the Furious is one of my favorite anime franchises of all time. It's pretty good. Studio uh, Bones really stretching their <laughs> muscles. Really, um, I, I've been I've been basically kind of slowly but surely coercing people into watching Fast and the Furious, mm-hmm. and the and the the couple of people that have come out of Hobbs and Shaw have come to me and said, "This is literally the stupidest thing I've watched, and I've never had more fun." No, Hobbs and Shaw is fucking ridiculous. I cannot, for the life of me, think to myself that the MCU is more grounded than the Fast and Furious universe. Yeah. It's insane. There is a scenario where they, I shit you not, do a cartoon back and forth where they they both find out who they're working for and they do the speaking at the same time. Who? This guy? He's an asshole. Like, at the same yeah. exact fucking time. And they're talking shit to each other, and it's the most baby bullshit insults. And I was ear to ear, grin ear to ear, because it was so mindlessly fun. Mm -hmm. And the concept of Hobbs and Shaw 
is it's a spinoff from these two main characters. These two characters who have been antagonists in the series. They got their redemption arcs by Fast 8. Yeah. And now they're now they're protagonists within the within the fucking series. The Vegeta and I who who's another it's Vegeta. It's Vegeta and Boo. Piccolo, Yamcha, Piccolo. fucking Tien. Yeah. Every one of Goku's friends is is someone who just wanted to beat his Vegeta ass. Vegeta killed Yamcha, then cucked him, and he still gets to be in the friend group. Yep. Yep. Well, not, he doesn't have a choice. It's he like either, you, you, either you roll all or right, you don't. Yam, all right, Yamcha. You roll you or you say? don't, homie. You roll with the crew. Yo, or you we don't. share the same blood, kinda. <laughs> I don't know who the fuck you are, Yamcha. <laughs> Baseball playing head ass. So, uh, there is a virus called the Snowflake. And essentially, Shaw's, or Shaw's sister is a special forces agent who gets infected. Like, she infects herself with it. And she has, like, a certain amount of time before it, it unleashes and destroys the entirety of the human race. So... Hobbs and Shaw have to come together to fight cybernetic Idris Elba, who is capable of having a HUD that can determine people's uh, threat level, the amount of force that's in their punch, yeah. and their and their combo moves yeah. that are coming out. And he has a motorcycle that drives itself, and also... I shit you not, there's a point in which he gets knocked off the motorcycle. He runs off into a full sprint, slides, and the motorcycle contorts and conforms to the ground underneath him to allow his legs to wrap around the motorcycle and then transforms back into a regular motorcycle and he just speeds off after the protagonist. Yeah. And I was like, this is the stoop. This is so good. What the fuck? What the fuck? I, I think after hearing all that and going, wow, I feel like I'd really enjoy this simply because of how, like, like so dumb, but so fun. And it's made it way better when I've just been out in public shopping for groceries and I overhear conversations and it's like, did you see the new Hobbs and Shaw movie? It's like, yeah, I did. It was really good. It might be my one of my favorites. Like, it was I, just a really good movie. I liked the story. <laughs> and like, but talking about it like it's not. Yeah, like this stupid. big, like the dumbest thing. I shit you not. If you look at it like an anime, you'll you'll say it's a good story too. I'm not even kidding you. Just, hey, you know. If you just look at it like it's an anime, straight up, it is an... They, I already told you, man. It well, is. From what you described in... What was it? Fate was the one where Vin Diesel is evil. That is just Itachi's character arc. Yeah, yeah. Vin in, Diesel in is Fate, just Itachi. In Fate of the Furious, essentially, Vin Diesel... I don't want to spoil the... The, the reveal well, for you. But that's... But, but, but Vin yeah. Diesel has to become evil... And he fights off all of his old friends, and, yeah. he, and they fight him with cars. And and in his fucking muscle car, he takes on all like seven of yeah. these people and flips all of their cars. You know the picture of the John Wick poster with all the the guns and yeah. knives pointed at him. It's Vin Diesel's car and a bunch of other muscle cars. <laughs> and that's just a scene in the movie that happens. It's so good. So, uh. Hobbs and Shaw literally opens up so many possibilities for the Fast and Furious universe at this point. Including. Because it ends on a, we'll get you next time. Oh, God. So there's a, there's a new organization that is strictly, like, evil. Like, not even, like... So, so Fast and Furious is upgraded from, like, like cartel members to basically, like, th you're fighting terrorists now. Yeah. This one is... This is a secret organization of people who are attempting to further the evolution of humanity and are doing so by have, way we, of we cybernetics. To, we have to fight SEAL. <laughs> we have to fight SEAL. And they all got their fucking Cyclops visors on. So, like, so the, not only that, there's so many scenes I want to go over. Like when the first time Idris Elbow sees the rock throw a punch mr hobbs himself throws a punch yeah and his and his and, hud, and says, his two, hud says 1300 pounds of force it, are say, coming it at says him. 236p plus 10 on block <laughs> <laughs> he's got the hitbox viewer on this man calculating frame data as we speak oh no he's banned he's banned he's from me banned. He, can't go. he can't it's a he's using a trainer fixing fuck matches. him um 
then then like the they have the, the comedy is also so fucking dumb it's great yeah it's so simple and and one of my favorite scenes is the first time that like the the evil organization kind of like invades uh, to set the scene up, they they find the sister and they bring her back, and uh, you know they they're all like, okay, let's let's make sure that she stays here. We got to figure out what we're gonna do with her. And Shaw's like, no, fuck you guys. I'm I'm gonna bring her back to my family where we're gonna keep her safe. Then like a huge explosion happens on the fucking like top floor of this building. They uh, Ildis Elba grabs her and fucking f- repels out of a building, and. Hobbs and Shaw, Rock and, and Jason Stage. I was going to say, I other. feel like it's worth mentioning. I don't know which one is Hobbs and which so, one is Shaw. So, so, so the Rock and Jason Statham are looking down and they're like, all right, okay, we got to do this. And they're like, okay, one, two, three. And on three, the Rock jumps and Jason Statham flicks him off and goes into the elevator. So then Jason Statham breaks the elevator so the elevator is falling rapidly. <laughs> And the rock is falling, is so it? he uses other people to like the people that he that are repelling. He grabs onto them to stop himself, and he's flinging himself into the elevator. And every time he does it, Jason Statham's just sitting in there doing the fucking whoa on on the rock, going, "You stupid fucking idiot! How could you believe I was gonna go out there?" And the rock is fighting people mid air. Going back and forth, and he's just like, I'm having a chill fucking time. I don't know about you. <laughs> I've been doing the raw dance on him. And he finally, like, gets, like, he, mind you, this he's 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 using other people. Like, it's on the first one. He gets that first one, yeah. throws him away, jumps off, goes to the next one. He's, yeah, he's, he's like using fucking them. Super Mario right. jumping across Goombas. <laughs> like, <laughs> Finally gets them down. They all get to the fo- floor. Jason Statham fucking breaks the elevator again. Makes sure it emergency stops. Jumps out. Just starts doing katas on people on the ground floor. They fucking sit there. And they're like, okay, we gotta leave. They get in their fucking uh, the Lamborghini. That The Rock is comically huge. <laughs> Those are small vehicles. Very small. And, and, they, the and it turns into a giant, like a huge fucking chase between Idris Elba and, and the three protagonists. And, and the rock is just firing out the window, getting perfect headshots and sending this motherfucker flying. And it's, dude, it's so good. <laughs> I'm very excited to see I, it. I and almost kind of want you to go watch it jet with, like, just no blo- with no context. No context. No context because it. I'm not even kidding you. It plays itself off like you don't need to know in a sense because it. it's better if you have like obviously there like it's uses, nods and there's. Yeah, yeah, there's super huge nods to like other like characters in the franchise and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, but it plays itself pretty cleanly as like you can watch this almost entirely clean and it's fine. Okay. I'll consider so, it. Yeah. For sure. And that's, then, and we'll, cause I feel like the fast and furious thing is going to be like a, like a huge undertaking. That's a huge undertaking. Um, but this one was just, I mean, Jesse saw it. Jesse loved it. Yeah. I'm very, I'm very excited. Everything I've heard about it sounds, sounds right up my alley in terms of, absolute bonkers dumb stupid shit yeah absolutely uh okay so for listening i guess we're just gonna finish it off been listening to uh i o that's i underscore o okay more of him it's his, officially uh, gotten to letters and symbols yeah well i mean it's like the um, it's like a computer thing i don't know what the fuck the io thing means. yeah uh but um just released his new ep house of god really fucking good Really good shit. Um, Anthony Fantano has turned me on to these guys called uh, The Blank Mass, which is like a sort of weird indie industrial electro band. Pretty cool. Uh, so far, anything? anyone else? I'm looking, I'm looking. No one? Nope, that's just it. Uh, everyone I've been listening to, I've already told you guys about. I think I've even told you about IO, but IO's I, new, new fucking shit drop. Go listen yeah. to that shit if you're into Hardcore techno and house music. Oh, man. Talking about how the shot got me a little sweaty, you know? Yeah, I know. I it, little... It's it's all it's all coming back. Yeah. Oh, it's not even on here anymore. Shit. Oh, I, um, okay. So, 
No, I'm going to find it because I really don't want to go another podcast without bringing this this up. I started up a, and I, I may have said it last time. You're going to hear it again if that's the case. Um, I started up a um, Korean webcomic or a manhwa, as they're called, called Burning Effect, which have I, does that sound familiar to you? Have I done this spiel before? No, it hasn't. Okay. So Burning Effect is all the feelings you get from, like, when you think about Studio Trigger over the top action and, like, super stylized art that when you go back and see a Trigger show, it's like, yeah, there's that. it's there, but it's not there all the time. Mm -hmm. This is that all the time. And just real quick, if you want a cool webcomic to read, it's got cool punch girls and really, really well-drawn art. Look up Burning Effect. The website I used to read it is is no longer in service. So I yeah. don't have any more information to give yeah. you. I, I I think I know the website you were talking about, but I use it for the other mon was. Yeah. The other ones. No, I are won't. you talking about web webtoon? Web? Yeah. No, no, no. That's all official. That's that's no, not, not webtoon. I'm sorry. Mon wa it's whatever no. fucking I'm thinking J Jamin Jamin is Jim Jam Jam Jam. Oh, and I haven't Jamin been there. Ins, ins. I, I use whatever uh Fucking the boys showed me. Yeah, I can't talk about the ones I read. I mean, I can, but this dude's reading. This, this dude's reading porn. He's it's reading, a good story. He's reading porn. It was fun. Here, I'll just show a you. A pervert's daily life is great. Show you Holy the main shit, character. that's great. She's super fucking cool. I don't remember names, uh, but yes, Burning Effect by Tae Hyun Park. If you can find it, let me know so I can continue reading it. Manwas are so fucking cool because they're yeah. basically indie joints. Almost every one that I've seen is like an indie joint yeah. that just became a webtoon. It's like the web comic of, you know, yesteryear. It's like web comics, but like with quality and they're not silly video game jokes. This isn't I'm a gonna talk shit about VG Cats right oh, now. Am I going to talk about control delete right now? Oh, is wow. it time? Is it here? Are we really going to talk about um Penny Probably. Arcade's the only one that fucking survived. And I don't know how... Oh, God. Uh, Mega Tokyo. Do you remember Mega Tokyo? I don't remember Mega Tokyo, no. Have you never read that one? No. That one was the most fucking weeaboo I've ever... Uh, it, <laughs> concept of that was uh, two gamers go to E3... One of them gets really drunk. This is like this is like early is 2000s. Is this a story? Is this like a like a? So it a, used to basically what it did was it, it started off as a like a like a fucking penny arcade kind of video game jokey thing, and then it became a huge story. That's actually very interesting, uh, for for its time. But essentially, the the idea was these two gamers went to E3. One of them got convinced while they were drunk to go to Japan. So they used all of their life savings to go to Japan, and it's them living in Japan just trying to make ends meet. Hmm. Uh, but effectively, it turns into a scenario where a lot of the Japanese companies are, like the Japanese game companies actually are fighting each other with real weaponries, like weaponry and shit like that. And the police force has mechs, and magical girls are real, and there's, there's a very weird fucking thing with that. And there's an MMO with some dating sim shit that is very weird. It's it's an incredibly strange it's, web it's, comic that goes like in a it. lot of directions, but I I remember like very much being into Mecha Tokyo when I was younger. It was huh. super fun. Are you looking at it right now? No, no, I'm not. I'm looking up a, a different web comic that I started reading, but I wanted to let it like get a lot before I started reading it again. Right. Um it's done by the guy who uh would he, he did a lot of art for Wooly. I forget his name. Q, Q or Kurzak? Q? Mm. I don't know. It's called Vibe. And it is a, it, it's a, it's kind of just a shonen battle series thing, but based off of like New, or New Orleans, like voodoo, like. That's fucking dope. Which stuff. And they become stan, like voodoo stands. It's voodoo stands. Yep. And it's about a, a kid who fights bad vibes out of people. And the vibes are big, spooky voodoo demons. It's very cool. That's it's very just cool. called Vibe. That's very cool. Um, let's let's talk about this fucking this uh, new yeah, shit. Let's go, we're already let's, here. Yeah, let's go. Yeah, while we're here. While we're here, we I was might just going to cut well. the podcast off right now, but yeah, we do have a pretty sizable list, so we'll just There's go through. A lot it. of shit to go through. There's a lot of stuff that happened in the span yeah. of a couple of 
Uh, you want me to just kill Evo news right quick? Let's. Mm, you know what? No. Let me no? see here. Okay. I kind of. I wanted to go over. Uh, two two sad things first. Okay. Uh, just to get it out of the way. Uh, I don't know if you heard about this. The forty uh, old man was just arrested for basically saying he was going to reenact the Keo Annie firebombing at Square Enix. Yeah. I did so that's hear, good. I heard about that not too long before you put that in there. Yeah. Yep. So that's good that he's fucking behind bars. Yep. It's bad that there's going to be a cop, bunch of cop about killers because, I mean, it was, you know, yeah. retroactively still, like we said, one of the worst mass murders of all time. And then obviously we're not going to get into the, the concept of that. On our fucking front, there's yep. another bunch of mass murders that happened over the last weekend. Yeah. And Walmart apparently is losing their fucking minds and deciding to side with everybody in the world who's saying that video game violence is affecting all of these mass shooters. And I really... And I, it, we really can't the sell point, these games anymore. I was going to say, the point really can't be stressed enough that at our Walmart, that's particularly close to us, the gun section is remarkably close to the video game section. Yep. Mm-hmm. But you could still go buy a gun if you want. They're mm-hmm. still there. You can get a gun, you get some ammo. Why not? It's there at the Walmart. Yep. You can get. You go. You go. You get your Tide. You know. Do some laundry. Get your Red Baron French bread pizzas. Maybe get, a Glock. Get your Glock. Mm-hmm. You know. Nice. nice dog food. Heck and you know, cockler. Whatever you got to get. You know. A what? F- yeah. It's a. It's a real. A heck and cockler. Heck and cockler. Heck and is the cockler. Name of, is there, is, it's two names. Oh. Uh-huh. So. Uh, yeah, there's I like been a lot of cockler more. It's that heckin' when those cocklers, those, those heckin' cocklers. Um, there has uh, been a lot of hearsay. There was a, a representative who came out and just dead ass said to everybody, "Yeah, this is a this is what a, a company initiative that we're going to do. This is a statement directly yeah. from ever." And then someone came out and said, "We don't know what the fuck that person's talking about." Yeah, like we're still selling games, but yeah, uh, and guns, uh, right? We, but a lot of a lot of places have been like a lot of more conservative areas have been taking the games away. Yeah, and putting and not and the moving, guns and away. putting the guns in the games cabinets. Yeah, and and once again, uh, I I want to stress because it's been a, a huge fucking like debate online. Yeah, uh, we don't try to be oh I'm, at least with Max, I don't try to get him overly political. I, I know say. it makes him uncomfortable. I have no I fucking I've qualms said with that. that. Huh? So I don't think I've explicitly said that. No, but I. But I, I mean, heavily, heavily implied. You've it. Heavily implied it when you when you have like I swear to God you might as well have like a wrap it up box when we talk about this. There's kind of shit. very much a wrap. Okay, yeah. yes, there is a wrap yeah. it up box. So, um, but like one of the main things that we have to come out and say is like this is first and foremost this is all deflection. Like we're I'm gonna go ahead. I don't think yeah. you have a, a problem I, with I, laying no, putting the line very, in the sand. Very this much. Is, this is a. This is not. A video game problem. It's it never a was a video problem. game problem. It's a gun problem. It's, yeah. So. And, it's, and it's also... And even blaming the video games is not... Like, they don't give a fuck about video games. They don't care about what you're playing. Like, they just... They just don't want to deal with the real problem right now. This like, happens every time. It's going to keep on happening. It's a shame that right now, you know... It, Dude, it's crazy enough. Something might happen. You know, you know, you might not be able to buy your Omega Labyrinth Life for your Switch, even if it is uncensored in the U.S. Mm. But write it out. This shit. Ha- as far as games go, this happens all the time, and it'll unfortunately continue to happen. Yeah, it's it's it is getting to a point where yeah. uh, so many people can't even like come together and and. Because the you know the the fucking El Paso thing happened, and then you're like, oh well, in Ohio, someone who was directly in, like heard that and was like, that sounds like a great idea, and then killed nine people in thirty seconds. He died too, mm-hmm. thankfully. Yeah. But you know, like the the fucking thing is, is that it's just what it comes down to is there needs to be a conversation that needs to be had about gun control, whether or not that's banning or just more you know lenient fucking you know less lenient fucking yeah. Uh, Background checks or something like that. That's a whole other conversation for a whole other podcast. But, but yeah, essentially, in the scope of just our... get the fucking video games away from it. In, Fuck in, off. In the scope of our podcast, we hope that we don't have to lump a story like this in anymore. Yeah. Because stop. <laughs> when they're literally writing a letter that says exactly why it happens, you can't just. It's not a fucking Mad Lib. You yeah. can't just start poking other shit in there. Yeah. So just. 
just keep enjoying your games. Be kind to each other. Be nice. You know, if a, you know, I didn't even put this down. You didn't either. But you know, if a company happens to be making a game and they decide to go with the Epic Game Store, don't send them death threats. Oh. Even if they do make a very very shitty post that you should get mad about because they want you to get mad about it. I don't even remember the name of the game. That's how like insignificant that company well, was. U- Ooblets is not even on the fucking radar for yeah. a lot of people. Yeah, I don't give a fuck about Ooblets. Why'd you be a dick? Yeah. Why'd you? Why like? It, it is what it is. I. I yeah. It, it's <laughs> it's it, and that to me is another like not. It, it's not a non-story. Don't send death threats to people. The only reason I brought it up was to use it to say like be kind. You know, I'm only bringing it in there for that purpose because right. otherwise yeah a company made a, a purposefully inflammatory post to, in order to get a rise out of people they got a rise it was a much bigger rise than they were expecting but yeah don't send death Guys, threats don't be shitty just I, don't be shitty i don't know how to how else to explain it to everybody when we all kind of come as a collective and have to sit there and be like Oh well, I hate that they make fun of the gamers or da da da. And we may we may fucking talk shit about Resetera every now and then, and we may like kind of come at these people who are a little too on the nose when it comes to this sort of stuff. Yeah. Um, they keep doing it, and it's gonna give the mainstream more ammo when we're our immediate gut response is to basically sit there and go and send death threats. Yeah. And say shit that we shouldn't say. Yeah. And it's not like I don't want to homogenize everything. I don't want to get rid of things like trash talk. Trash talk's fun. Yeah. But like on some fucking level, you should Ooh, probably just be a decent human down. being. Like it, it, it and not, anonymity is pretty much gone from the internet, guys. Yeah. It's your 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 fucking shit's public domain. Anyone can find you. Yeah. It doesn't take that fucking long yeah. to get doxxed. I'd rather you not. Yeah, don't. But the fact of the matter is is that like it just don't be a shitty person. Just if, don't. If seeing the news go, the government wants to take your video games away because they're turning you into violent killers, and that makes you really upset, then just prove them wrong. Yeah. Prove that, hey, you know, I love video games because they showed me two awesome people I could donate all my money to. <laughs> you know. like Hoist up the things yeah. where we should, we talk about the Kotaku articles about that guy with cancer who found all of his friends in Destiny and, yeah. and hoist up these articles about the the Smash the kid who played Smash before he uh, passed away. Hoist up all of this other shit about bringing people together. Yeah. Don't continuously put yourself in scenarios yeah. where you're going to be a dick and then also molest people at places like the Evo after parties and stuff yeah, like that. Don't do that. Don't do that. Yeah. I mean, you know, don't. all things being said... Vegas is also kind of a shitty place in general. So it's a, to yeah. say it's entirely gamers that did that kind of shit over there, mm-hmm. kind of a you know weird misnomer. But um, it is what yeah, it is. just be good. If you it, listen, if you lost sixteen hundred dollars <sighs> playing fucking Million Arthur, uh, the gotcha game on mobile, maybe just hold the L. <laughs> just take, maybe don't spend that much next just time. Just like just like Umbra in that one clip. Oh god, I gotta show you that fucking clip. It's from the twenty four hour stream. What happened? It was it, we were playing fucking Rainbow, and I think Spaghetto oh. was playing alongside us, and he got fucked really bad, and he was jawing it up so hard, and Umbra just hit just the most serious I've ever heard him. Just take the fucking L. <laughs> it was the funniest shit. Learn how to hold your L's. They're not oh that heavy. Oh my god. The L is only as heavy as you let it be. <laughs> You decide whether that's an uppercase or a lowercase L. Oh, man. And you decide whether it ends with a period or a d- ellipses or a dash or, or a fucking semicolon. exclamation mark. Going to be honest, I got Bs in English, so you tell You're me. close. You got it. Yeah. Well, I know that you can end things with all those. Mm-hmm. I'm sure. Um, let's do it. Let's do it. Evo, real quick. I'm going to run down these. The only reason I'm running down these is because now I have experience with most of the things on here, and I have hands-on with it. Um, here's everything that got announced at Evo. Uniclear, there's a new character. His name is Londraka. He looks cool. He's an ice skater. Looks really cool. Cool. Grand Blue Versus is going to be coming out on February 6th of next year. There's a big, involved, cooperative story RPG mode. Gee, I wonder if we're going to stream that. Probably not. Fuck yeah. Grand Blue. Uh wow. <laughs> Probably will. Um, Janemba and Gogeta got shown off. Wow, my 
my god, I can't believe it. Uh, another Goku! Another Goku, but not Goku. Janemba is actually kind of fun. Unfortunately, Dragon Ball and its community makes me not want to play that game ever. Uh, Nightwolf got an extended trailer. that He doesn't come out till next week, so I don't know if he's cool or not. He doesn't look very cool. I hate Nightwolf. I think he's a boring character, and he's still boring. I want cool Native American characters in fighting games, and we haven't gotten a single one that plays cool. Oh. That plays cool. Because Chief Thunder and Killer Instinct fucking look sick, but he plays really boring. Mm. Uh, BB Tag 2.0. It's Blitz Tank. Ha, ha, ha. Blitz Tank. Woo. So the Senran Kagura drop was like called, what, two fucking years ago? It was called point? when the game released. Yep. Yeah. So Well, we didn't expect, I still wasn't expecting Yumi, but she's, uh, she's the poster girl now, so I get it. Yumi, Akatsuki, Blitz Tank, and Neapolitan, woo, only I care. From Ruby, um, if they were, they were going to add... Neapolitan looks great. Yeah, if they were going to add one mm. more Ruby character that wasn't Crow, because they can't, because his voice actor is not having a great time. <laughs> Yikes! Whoops. Uh, Neapolitan was a good pick. And there's going to be five more... There's going to be nine characters total coming out on November 21st, along with balance changes, UI updates... Mechanic changes. So all the characters are coming out on the twenty first. They're all coming out on twenty first. Okay, Blaze that's huge. Blue, Blaze Blue, Cross Tag Battle two point oh, with its mechanical changes. Is that a new changes. season pass yeah. as well. It's no, I, I think it's just that's that's your update. You get oh. nine more characters, and then the balance changes, and mechanical updates, will all be free. That's fantastic. Um, Street Fighter Five characters, rut row, they got leaked. But E Honda is a lot of fun. Lucia is a lot of fun. Poison is surprisingly a lot of fun because she's not Poison from Street Fighter Four. She's just a different character. She's now Whip, from King of Fighters. I'm sure one really person play, will be able to relate. I really want to play Lucia. Uh, speaking of which, someone actually asked me about this. Uh, as your resident Spanish man, yes, uh, yes. There do exist blonde hair and blue eyed Spanish people. Yeah, with New it, York accents. With, uh, Sorry, Metro exist. City accents. My uncle is a blonde haired, blue eyed guy. He was born with blonde hair and blue eyes. Like, it's just, it's weird. I don't look anything close to that. You were very, very oh, far I, I've away. I've had from multiple that. conversations explaining, like, no, Phil's like, he's, he's only like show white. <laughs> I only wear white privilege as an armor. <laughs> it's a glamour. He's like, we're like inverse planeswalkers. That's what we are. <laughs> like, if I got tanned. Oh, God. Lucy is a lot of fun. I like her. I don't know if I like Street Fighter, but I'm, I'm, I, I, I've been putting it on pretty much every night, playing a couple matches, and I'm starting to understand it. I don't know if I like it, but I understand the appeal. Samurai Showdown uh, huge. is getting a new character every single month in their season pass all the way up to the end of the year. Shizumaru is being added. He's the Umbrella Guy from 5, and I think he debuted in 4 or 3. Mm -hmm. um, he's going to be completely free. So even if you didn't get the, free, or the season pass while it was free, which you should have, uh, Shizumaru will be free. Then they announced that Mina, the bow girl, is going to be the first DLC character Good. on season 2, oh. which will be next year. Oh. So who knows when that's going to start. So that's when I pick up Sam Show. Yep. King of Fighters 15 logo. All you needed, all you needed was one. That's it. It works. That's it. It works every time. The logo worked. Mm -hmm. Functioning logo. Soul Calibur 6 Cassandra trailer. We all expected that. We thought the game was dead. But it wasn't just Cassandra. Every time someone bounce, she gets bounced on, bounced on somebody, I say, God, I wish that were me. Yeah, it's the Squidward picture with the butt eyes. You know the one. You guys like SpongeBob, right, kids? Anyway, no. Cassandra is a lot of fun. And what? honestly, I wish instead of adding Cassandra, they replace Sophidia with Cassandra. Like, just remove Sophidia. Who cares? Damn. Because Cassandra is a lot of fun. Okay. Um, but that wasn't it. Sokaiver Season 2. It's going to have Haramaru in it and three others. Cool. They weren't even going to make a Season 2, but you guys liked the game. So they want your money. Good job, guys. Continued support. That's always fun. Um, Are they even making? I heard that Soul Calibur launched really terribly. Yeah, but people liked it, so they're gonna get those people's money. God bless them. God bless them. Uh, Tekken Seven is gonna get a season two. It's gonna have Zafina and a new character. Thank fucking god. Leroy looks great. I've read all of these, 
And guess how many new characters I've read? One. Oh, new characters that weren't like... That weren't already from something. Neapolitan was the only one that was a new character. So Leroy is coming to the game. There's a lot of black dudes with dreads from this Evo. They're all awesome and sick. So one of my especially Leroy. One of my favorite things. Uh, I don't. I I know a little bit about the concept of it. I've always heard of it. Uh, you know the the famous uh, you know cookouts for uh, amongst yeah the black you community. S- you saw Harada learning what a cookout is. Yeah, it was adorable. Uh, it was one of my favorite things that people were like. Um, Harada getting invited to the cookouts one of the most like adorable things in 2019 and it really was he was like like, I don't understand this oh well that's cool and then someone showed him the barbecue picture and he's like that's way bigger than in Japan I'm bringing tequila and then and then like the low key the the drop that Max had where he's just hanging out with fucking Harada right there did you see that he he did the, uh, the, the guilty, guilty gear reveal. The guilty yeah, gear reveal. Right Harada's there. just showing up like, oh, he's hello. Just standing there. What's up? Who? Um, by the way, we're gonna we're glossing over this. Harada had the best reveal ever. Yeah, I don't think there's there's ever gonna be a reveal that's topped by by because that it, ever. it directly insulted a very wholesome statement by Ono that happened. Not even like an hour earlier. If you show <laughs> up to Evo or watch Evo and Ono's being the nicest, most wholesome person he possibly can You can, can hate be, his game, you, but you can't hate the man. Right. You can almost bet your ass that Harada is around the corner coming up with ways to sandbag that motherfucker at every turn. Yeah. And it's always amazing. It's very cute. He's, he, is the, he is the big brother that just won't let go. No. He will just continuously poke and prod. And so Ono just ends up fucking beating him up in a, in a, in a total rage. And, and I have just a fucking... Few- <laughs> like, <laughs> you know? Ono knows how to do a Shoryuken. I have never seen Harada do a short. Yeah, I, I don't think Harada knows how to fucking throw so, down. And he put a kuma in his own fucking game. Yeah, so like uh, I don't know what the fuck he's gonna that. do. He's fucked. I think I think um, Ono versus Harada. Oh no, I'll put my money on Ono any day. But uh, yeah, season two or sorry, I don't know why I put season two. Hey, season fuck three you, Mr. Tekken Wizard. We'll have new UI, new balances changes, new moves, new training mode options, and not Snake. It won't have Snake. No one, no one is putting Snake anywhere. Snake is staying where he is. Thanks, Mister. Did you see that fucking uh, hater had a whole fucking oh my hubbub god about it? So Evo thought it would it'd be a funny haha joke if right at, so. And this is something that we again we don't see on stream is that between matches when we see ads at home, people in the stadium they play like fun little games like the, the one I heard Wooly talking about was like. Um, Will it kill? And they'll like freeze frame a fighting game match from like Street Fighter Two or like Third Strike, like old old Evo matches. Yeah. And then they go, "Will it kill?" And the crowd yells, and they play the clip out. So after losers finals, there's a clip that came up, and it was Harada and Snake and the Codec, and Snake said, "This is some good ass Tekken," and then it went away, and that was it. And apparently. Harada was immediately pissed and it was just phone in hand already making calls. So Evo thought it'd be funny if during a time where everyone was making big announcements for their fighting games, if they just took Mark Mann, uh, who commentates Tekken, works for Mad Cats, took his Twitch notification of David Hayter saying this is some good ass Tekken that he paid for with Cameo. And they just put that, and they had, like, a big thing, like it was an accidental trailer start that they played. And no one, not a single person thought, hey, somebody might think this is a reveal. They specifically said, like, we didn't think people would interpret it that way. What the fuck was the point then? Like, what are you talking like, about? Why did you even do it? You're literally you're considered what, the new the me? new fucking platform. You're fighting game E3. Yeah. What are you fucking what? actually talking? Mr. Wizard, shut the fuck up. I Every single time I, I always hear about him fucking complaining I, about some shit. Mr. Wizard, shut the fuck I, up. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know whose fault it was. Uh. I uh, I you know. 
I know of some people who work with Tenno, the production company. I don't think it was them. I don't know. No, someone internally who there, worked that was at an Evo, Evo decision. It was an like Evo at, decision. So yeah. They came out and said, "Yeah, yeah. we're we were a hundred percent. We're gonna. This was a joke. Like we didn't think it was gonna be this big of a fucking deal. Yeah. It's like uh, what why are you actually didn't fucking you talking think? about? Because you just completely deflated the fucking Tekken if, Seven announcement. Everyone who watched it, like, yeah. but like before, was like." Oh, this is this like without because, knowledge of it, thought it was fucking sick. Because as someone who was like, listen, we're probably not gonna get Kiryu. Do you know who'd be an awesome guest character? Fucking Snake. Specifically Naked Snake from Metal Gear Solid 3 with all the CQC stuff. Like he could be kinda like Dragonov. You already got a moveset there. Like you have like I wanted Snake. And yeah. I'm really happy I didn't look at the spoiler thing when you saw it. Yeah. Because like, yeah, that just like, totally deflates it. And luckily, like, Harada brought some fucking awesome shit. Like, Zafina's back. Everyone loves Zafina. Well, people like Zafina. She think looks she, really cool. I think she's cool. She was really bad in both of the games she but was she in. But she does so not I, look bad here. So. But she was, I hope she's good. She's in Tekken 7. She's going to be good. Yeah. Everyone's viable. It's fine. Everyone's viable. Uh, and Leroy, awesome, brand new character that was in, so cool. received way better than even Harada or his team were thinking. So like, fucking awesome cool. character. So, you know, luckily they brought like some really good stuff, but yeah, that was, that was, Oh my God. That's some, that's some dummy, stupid shit. It's the, it's, it is such a fucking weird disconnect between what you do, what your how many event years, represents. How many how years have you been, been doing, doing this, this for? How many Evos is how this How professional been? you're supposed to be yeah. and how you didn't clear it with literally fucking nobody. What if that cyberpunk trailer played and then Keanu Reeves tweeted out, uh, what the fuck? Yeah. Yeah, what the fuck is that oh, about? We just thought it'd be funny because he was a... He Johnny Mnemonic. was a digital man. Johnny Mnemonic. Sure. Cyberpunk. That's Why what not? I think. Keanu. No, but like we put the Keanu Reeves thing. In. Oh, okay. I, I get what you're saying. Yeah. Um, and then the Guilty Gear trailer, which has changed my life. That is bullshit. Crazy. It, he says blazing twice. Still my heart. I is promise blazing. you he says blazing twice. Is it blazing? He says, that is bullshit blazing. Still my heart is blazing. I don't like that as much anymore. Well, it, that's what he says. That's what he's always he didn't change it. Crazy works way better. No, because... Fix it. The song might be called Blazing. We don't know. It's No, it's dumb. Maybe that's a motif. You don't know. You know it's not, though? Guilty Gear. Guilty Gear. I've seen that trailer so many goddamn times. I love it. It's changing my life. How, and that's not the only thing changing. How are you... Okay. Able... I'm going to put my that segue up on eBay, because apparently I don't need it anymore. <laughs> <laughs> this is... That was an unwise investment. I thought I'd have it for longer. Nope. Out the window. Well, now I don't... I was trying to say, it's like, how do you make a game that looks better than Guilty Gear? Can you just make a new you Guilty make, Gear? You make a new Guilty Gear. <laughs> it was really... That was yeah. the joke for the longest time. It's the truth now. It yeah. is absolutely the truth. The shit that they're doing... So, I think what we described it as, or, or Austin had a really apt description of it, which was, as opposed to... The, uh, you know, with XR and Rev2, yeah. where everything was animated, you know, like it was a traditional anime, animated TV it show. Was, it was animated in twos. In twos. Uh, this one is, is the, this is the movie. This yeah. is Guilty That Gear part movie. I said. You said that. Yeah. And then he said it's animated on the ones. Yeah, it's animated and on the ones. yeah, it yeah, is. This is, if Guilty Gear was a TV anime, this is the OVA movie yeah. anime. It looks absolutely incredible. And as at, like even playing Grand Blue, I'm like, this is a pretty significant like Dragon Ball Fighters. I feel like is a step sideways from Guilty Gear, where it looks fantastic, but like all the cool things people say looks better than Guilty Gear. I think they just personally like the Dragon Ball effects more. Yeah, it's a lot of effects work going on. Grand Blue felt like a tiny step forward from Guilty Gear. New Guilty Gear is a leap. Like mm -hmm. this game looks fantastic. And I can't wait to see more of it at Arc Revo, where there will be a demo. And God, I wish I could go. Where's Arc Revo? I don't. I don't even know. Arc Revo is a Japan. California, I believe. Right? No, I think it's going to be West Coast. When is it? Oh, when is it? End yeah. of the year. Okay. 
Um, so we don't have to wait too long. It's got a um, it's got a 2020 release. Um, and Daisuke Shwatari came out with some statements. He said that this it's not a it's not an evolution of Guilty Gear, and it's not going back to the roots. It's not going back to its roots. It's, it's a complete it's, reconstruction. It's a reconstruction of the fighting game genre. This is this is Guilty Gear in an alternate reality. He did Don't the thing you that fucking dare. he did the thing that what? No, I thought you were gonna isekai this. I was like, there's no fucking... way. I feel like you fished too hard for that. Like, there's you said no... alternate reality. What else am I supposed to fucking think? Like a parallel, like a side. Like a different, like Doctor Strange saying, oh, there's like a bunch you, of reality. You, like a reality like PTSD. ours, but sideways. I have PTSD from this house now. You, you know how so? You don't even see it. No, but I, I hide it. it. I play I it subliminally it. through the walls. Yeah. The <laughs> I do. Point. I hear I turn, it. I turn the surround sound towards you. <laughs> um, oh, no. But yeah, so I don't know what that means. Hopefully that means they're also doing that with the net code. Because the game that I've been trying to play and been putting a lot of time into has been Guilty Gear. I've been doing a lot of combo challenges. I've been doing a lot of training mode and labbing and stuff like that. But to play a match in Guilty Gear right now, you got to join a Discord server and ask. And that's not great. Or just buy the PC version and play it on Parsec. Yeah, but... Yeah, but then I have to still go to a Discord server and ask. Oh, yeah, that's fine. I meant like... Probably better just do that, right? But let alone, like, forget netcode. Like, find a match. Oh, find you mean, like, somebody you to find play anybody. with. Anybody? Yeah, you go to a Discord and you say, "Hey, does is anyone awake? Does anybody oh. want to play right now?" Oh. Like, yeah. So netcode is the biggest improvement I'm hoping for, and I hope they don't change too much. You don't have to change too much gameplay wise, like core gameplay. How right. it feels to play. Right. Add in fucking wall breaks and all this stuff. You don't have to make it super simple. Guilty Gear doesn't have to be that. You 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 got you got cross tag and you got Grand Blue. You got two games that fill that niche right now. I really don't think it's gonna go simple. I I, I almost feel like uh, we're gonna probably you're not Danger Time is gone. The yeah. risk system is gone. The like I I don't even remember what the armor moves they have now. That gone. You don't need it. Get it out. Roman cancels more than ever before. More Roman cancels. Every color of the rainbow. Mm-hmm. Red, yellow, orange, blue, green. All Roman the cancels. YRGB Roman cancels. YRGB Roman cancels. <laughs> um, but yeah, looking forward to Guilty Gear. I'm looking forward to see who comes back and who is new. I'm always, always, always hoping for more new characters as opposed to returning characters. Fuck that. Zappa, Zappa, Zappa. Bring him back. No one. Bring him back. Zappa. Okay. Then, like I've always said, there's that. I very, want Zappa more than I want Anji. There's that very funny list of all the characters. And it's like, no, no testament, no investment. And we all laugh. <laughs> no bike in but those buy them. But those people <laughs> legit those people were literally commenting that on every piece of fighting game news for years. Bridget comes out. Not Bridget, fuck. Bridget's not coming out. Um Dizzy comes out. No one plays her. Biken comes out. No one plays her. Because you don't remember that these characters look really cool. But they're fucking weirdos that only three people are going to put in the time to actually learn. So please, please don't make them put Testament in. Here's You're the not going to play him. Here's the problem with <laughs> the way Guilty Gear is. And Guilty Gear as a, as a franchise. I was going to say, it's not even a Guilty Gear thing. Because I feel the same way about Lei Wulong in Tekken. Well, no. But like if you think about, okay. So in terms of every fighting game that's out right now. In terms of just technical know-how and and how hard it is to play a fighting game, yeah, I would I would pretty much put Guilty Gear at the top right now it's... in terms of needing technical knowledge and and matchup knowledge, in, yeah, because like really everything has been has been essentially dumbed down to such a fine point that I could fucking pick up a controller and kind of futz around with it. Guilty Gear is still something to where I would need to put time into it to even remotely get something good not to mention that it's not that it's not 
you know, See, easy. I, yeah, it's the skill ceiling. I, what's which one is? A, I always get that fucked up. So skill floor. Skill floor. Skill floor is where you start. Yeah. Skill ceiling is where you end up. Right. So the skill floor in Guilty Gear is slightly higher, but it is not as insane as as you've as been it making used it to as be. you've been making it out to be. Yeah, Guilty Gear XX is insanely difficult. Right, but I, but I'm, do you, would you think I'm wrong? Because you think about like all the games that came on that are on Evo to like start now. Right, I think that the only other game that would probably be up there in terms of complexity, in terms of actually need, like the like mechanical complexity and technical know how, would probably be Unist. No, like I don't well because like, I the only thing I think of like in the main games, well maybe like Tekken. It's yeah. always hard because Tekken has 300 fucking moves, but at the same time... It's not it even just... the moves. Tekken, learning how to move in Tekken, move, just moving, I'd say Tekken's probably the most technical to learn. To play Tekken, because you can hop in, you can hit buttons in Tekken. That's right. like... But understanding how to move <laughs> around in Tekken mm-hmm. is not easy to learn how to do it smart, like intelligently. Whereas like... If you played through Guilty Gear's tutorial and you go, okay, this mechanic is here, but it's not that important. This mechanic is here, but for my character, I don't need it. And like, I don't, I don't think Guilty Gear is like as crazy, uh, like a to get into as as you've been you've been making it out to be. I think you just don't have enough faith in you. And I also think that. And what you were saying, like, oh, yeah, you could just pick up a controller and play cross-tag battle. But if we played right now... But what like, I'm saying is is that it's, I, I don't put it... I would put something to where it's, like, even, like, Mortal Kombat... And I'm not saying I'm, I'd be competent. What I'm saying is, is that I wouldn't sit there and feel like I can't do fucking anything. There's a difference between so like you. It's hard for you to disconnect because you're so ingrained in the fighting game thing. I'm I, I'm pretty much the one the walker between worlds who understands what fighting games are, but isn't actually good at them, or doesn't put the time in for them. So basically, the way I look at it is, I w- on the face of it, Tekken is easier just from a, a, a mental fucking place because Tekken has been something where it's like it's not. I wouldn't consider Tekken niche. No. I would consider Tekken no, to be Tekken right up there the with biggest, Street Fighter. It's, it's underneath Mortal Kombat. Right, for right. The most popular fighting game. Yeah. So, like, in terms of, you know, everyone knows what this is. Everyone, you know, everyone plays Smash. Yeah. But then if they don't play Smash, a lot of people actually play Tekken or Mortal Kombat. Yeah. And that's, and, and it, that's you know, it. it's they just cycle between those three. Street Fighter died with four. <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. Yeah. Um, but when it comes to Guilty Gear... Like, yeah, I can put some buttons, but I'm going to get fucked in really fast. Like, if somebody even remotely has, like, a moderate knowledge against, like, my, like, little to no knowledge, and I, I can kind of understand, I'll get fucked way faster than I would probably in Tekken. Because in Tekken, I can just fucking, you know, I, I you could button mash something out and have a good time. I've done it. I, I've done it like ex, like excessively against people who play competitively because they if you have the knowledge whereas like I just I feel like with Guilty Gear it, it just but how long it, have you been playing Tekken for well I well the thing is it's on and off I've been playing Tekken for for me personally probably as long as I've been playing Guilty Gear I didn't pick up Tekken until I don't mean PS2. 7 I mean like how no long? no I meant like oh, I, I you're like, playing Guilty Gear on the PS2 oh uh, Xbox oh okay uh, yeah. so Midnight Carnival uh, which was at the time the best way to play Guilty Gear. Yeah. Um, so I've been playing around the same time frame as like that. I, I'm definitely not like a PS1 guy. I only kind of got into fighting games. Like honestly, yeah. Guilty Gear is what got me into fighting games. Yeah. Because I loved Guilty Gear's aesthetic so fucking much. But in terms of actual execution, I could never fucking do it. Because first of all, I had. The, the big, the Mondo Fucko That's controller. The Mondo Fucko controller oh, makes which it a is little probably difficult. Probably not great for fighting games. Uh, mm-hmm. But, you know, it, it was something where it was like, I just, I love the way that this, this series looks so much. And I loved how, like, there was so much underneath, like, the aesthetic and all this other shit. And the, the game was still fun, even though it was hard to play. But at its core, it was not something that I could pull out at a party and be like, Let's play some of this. 
Yeah, I feel that do. way about all weird niche anime fighters. That like, I'm not pulling out Aquapaza or Dengeki or Cross Tag right, Battle, but, even though that's a right, but much a, simpler game. Right, and, but, but I, you mean if you were to sit down and force like you you are you're playing this now? Yeah, this is what you're doing with your yeah. night. Then, y- so I, I I guess for me, I, you're probably correct in the technical herder. What I'm trying to say was is that basically, I I am curious to see where they're going to go in terms of general play style. Because I don't know if fighters need to be te- that technical anymore. I know a lot of people don't like the fact that there's a lot of execution being removed from fighting games. Um, as a very, very large point of contention within, like, you know, obviously old heads and just general people who are really mentioned in the FGC. But at the same time, I, I don't want Guilty Gear to be blaze blue easy not not blaze blue the actual game but like the cross tag i don't want it to be cross tag easy but if they toned it down i also wouldn't be entirely but because they're there but the thing is also like you said how exactly they tone it down because that tutorial is incredibly comprehensive that's, so but again that's the that's the thing is there are is stuff like abc sweep in guilty gear is just four buttons right Cross tag battle has stuff that's that easy. Yeah. Cross tag battle also has really complicated, like, you know, cross assault combos where you're controlling both characters and you're holding down buttons. Yeah, no, I'm not saying it's, I'm not saying like that. that it, it lacks complexity. I'm not, uh, you know, or rather. But what I'm saying is, Guilty Gear has its very complex stuff, but it also has ABC special move. Like, not everything in Guilty Gear is as complex. Is I feel like you're making, and this is, and I'm not saying this as someone who doesn't understand what simple is anymore because I'm just so you like because I can do inputs without thinking about it because yeah even for most games like a lot of complex like combos and stuff like that I can't do but I can do enough like like you don't need to do dust loops with Soul Bad Guy to be good at Guilty Gear all you have to do is like I know what I know what's happening here. If I can land a jab, I can get a knockdown. If I get a knockdown, I can do my one setup. That's it. That's all you really got to know. That's all I'm saying is is that like I know all of the complexity and arguments about complexity. I think are just like I'm really tired. Fuck, that just left. That sentence just it's went. gone. That just went it's right up there with the segue. Right up there with the segue up in heaven. Um. Or hell, dual one. Let's rock. Fuck. Um, I don't. All know. I'm saying. All I'm saying is, I think maybe the game you should get back into fighting games with is an Undernight. I think you should just start playing Guilty Gear if you think it's so cool. I, I think really you should just think give it a game. shot because but it's also, not who's as scary. Play with me. <laughs> me, and we won't even have to. I won't even have to go in the Discord. That's what it is. That's what it comes down to. I just no, gotta no, kick play your, Undernight. Play Guilty Gear. I, gotta, I don't have anyone. I gotta kick your door down. <laughs> Get in! Yeah. That's it. If you think a game looks cool, then you'll be willing to learn it. If you don't... If, if, if Making the game simple isn't going to make more people play it. That's It's it's never worked. It's never worked once. Cross-tag battles are really easy to play fighting game. How many units did that thing sell? Not as much as Tekken did. Wouldn't even say as much as Guilty Gear did. I... Well, that's... That's a weird scenario. It's a weird scenario because no one gives a fuck about Blaze Blue. Or Undernight, well, or Persona. Well, no, people give a fuck about Blaze Not Blue. as much as they do about Tekken, though. But you're also talking about, like, you wouldn't be able to sell a fighter with that had the same mechanics as Blaze Blue to the Ruby squad. Like, I don't, like, it. you know, like... What, regular really, Ruby? Yeah, That's regular Ruby That's what Monty nerds. wanted to make. He wanted to just make Blaze Blue with Ruby. Right. And but- that's what they've talked about making after Cross Tag Battle did well. Or enough. Is that they just want to do a uh, Ruby Blaze Blue game? Uh, is that? I, I guess. 100%, I guess it'll make money because of notoriety. I one hundred percent think you can. I don't know. The thing is, as long as you as long as you put enough Goku's in your game, people will buy your game. If you don't put enough Goku, that's what matters. Dragon Ball could be the fighters could be the most technical fighting game ever made. If you got all the Goku's, you're good. That's it. That's all that matters. Yeah. Fighting games suck anyway. Who cares? Yeah, it's got depressing real quick. 
You know what I care about? <laughs> the possibility that major corporations could send goons to my house <laughs> if I leak their info that they leaked. You don't even have to leak it anymore. What a they could just leak their own stuff. Situation, dude. What an absolute fucking ride this was. Okay, for those of you who don't know, as far as I've been told, so apparently there was something where it was a Twitch stream that had links to other videos from Borderlands 3 that were just sitting there. I've read multiple articles. I still don't really understand what's happening. Right. So, so but, there were multiple live Twitch broadcasts yeah. streaming Borderlands? Yeah, something to that nature where there was like a reveal trailer where somehow Take-Two or whoever was in charge of the of the, the thing that was going on would just link to footage from the game that just had not been shown before. Yeah. Like it was footage that just wasn't like out in the in the fucking wild. So this guy turns around, he's one of the first people to report on it and goes, Hey, he's this a, is cool shit. He's a major he's Borderlands a fucking, guy. He's a Borderlands stand, and you know how we treat our stands? We throw him in the fucking ground and make sure we never see him exactly. ever again. If somebody's willing to do free advertisement to you, the most important thing is to do a well check. Send some guys to his house. Mm-hmm. Make well sure he's check. doing all right. Rub him on the belly a little bit. To delete his Discord so that he never fucking talks to people again. Yeah. Was it his personal Discord? Did he have like a channel? I think it was a channel Discord. Okay. So uh, he took his own Twitter down to make sure that it, that didn't get fucking deleted. Yeah. His, his YouTube channel got taken down with seven DMCA takedown notices. That's quite a few. Which, okay, as everyone has said, they're technically allowed to do because he, uh, I think he yeah. was uploading footage of uh, what was found. And yeah. uh, but the the shittiest part, the one that everyone is always fucking pointing out to, is technically Take Two Interactive, this incredibly popular, one of the most profitable, I would say the most profitable organization, prolific within. creators of Space Station Silicon Valley, mm-hmm. as well as Red Dead, same guys. Uh, they also made this this little. I don't know if you know heard about this one. It's uh, you kind of get in cars and steal them, Grand Theft something. Oh. Rocket Robot. Yeah, that one. Yeah, Red uh, Cartridge. Really, I remember. really popular. Um, uh, they're making tons of money. The, these people who have just fucking gangbusters yeah. who l- released a literal microtransaction casino in their yeah. Rocket They released Robot gambling. Buster. Yeah. Let's not let's not dance around it's, it. It's gambling. it's gambling for kids. And it they actually and it fucking made so much money. I didn't even get the money back on the gambling. No, I'm sure that's doing pretty they, good. They did really well. Like they and they released it right after the court case, where they're like, "No, video games aren't gambling. Here's our e casino where you can put. It's not gambling because you don't get anything." <laughs> so they decided to go ahead and send two private detectives over to this guy's house to yeah. give him a little bit of the old work around, a little bit of that old. Hey, yeah. uh, you know, hit, 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 nudge, nudge, don't do that again. Also, how did you get that data? You know about the data. Yeah, where's How'd that you get data? That? Who'd you, what are you, a black hat hacker? And he turned around and said, you fucking people did it! You fucking like, assholes! Okay. Well, the first thing I did is I went to this Twitter account. It's at Borderlands. <laughs> this is your guy. This is the guy you want to go after. So, I don't, I don't, I don't know... Like, Wooly, Wooly brought up an incredibly good point in the podcast that I, I thought was really terrifying. Or not, I don't know if it's Wooly or Pat, uh, but they were like, because of the fact, like, normally we hear about this, and this is already a fucking problem. Yeah. You, if you heard about this with a company, you're like, that's shitty, but, like, no, 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 stop. It's just shitty. Yeah. It's just shitty. Capitalistic fucking greedy corporations, especially one that have as much money and fucking leeway as Take Two does, do not need to send people make, to your fucking house yeah. to go and knock on your door and ask you. There's so many different they, avenues that could have gone, and they had already effectively taken down like essentially all yeah. those avenues. Yeah, you ruined that dude's livelihood already. We can stop there, right? You like, didn't even inv- like you didn't even investigate it first. You ruined his livelihood livelihood first. And then, then you sent the River City Ransom boys to his house. Yeah, I, oof. You know, like, I, I get the concept that leaks are incredibly, like, they're, they're awful. demeaning and they suck. Yeah. And they're not, like, no one really likes having to deal with it. I don't want to see Yoshinori Ono come up and almost yeah. cry on stage again. Do you want that? I don't fucking no. want that. No, but guess what? He didn't leak it. Steam did. They leaked it. 
Yeah, it which was is worse. their fault. Mm-hmm. And it wasn't even like we had a person on the inside who just started putting stuff up on 4chan. Like, no. It was whoopsie doodle. It was like, oh, shit, dude. You know, we just we just sent out all the pre-order copies early. Oh, shit. Like, well, it, like you just, you leaked it. Yeah. It was you, Mr. It's almost, Pitchford. It's <laughs> almost always a, a situation in which the company that is in tr- like very little do i find that like leaks nowadays are uh people on the inside i think it's just people fucking being stupid and mishandling information and not understanding that one person gets one whiff and that's it that's it it's it's out in the ether yeah you cannot hide anything it's like that uh god what game was it when they fucking oh no the psp when fucking Dead Mouse had a prototype PSP and he left it on a fucking cab and someone was just walking around with a prototype PSP before it ever came out. Yeah, I it's remember like, that. It's like, yeah, don't... It's, all it takes is human error. Yeah, that's it. And it's almost Whoa. always your fault. One fuck up. And we call, you cannot all... hold people accountable. Like that you. First of all, how the hell did you... This was your fucking investigation process. You didn't even like remotely think to go back and and look at like the videos or the actual evidence of how he found the no. leak in the fucking first no, place. No, they did. But you can't admit you're wrong. You can't cuz then people will think you're stupid. So instead, you just let them think that you're a crazy Yeah, fear. Yeah, fear. Fear them. Yeah, we'll just come to your house and break your kneecaps. I I am so worried because and and this is always Cuz been... we're leaking stuff all the time. <laughs> Oh, hell yeah. I don't give a shit. If a motherfucker shows up, I, I know my rights, bitch. Fuck. Roll up. With a bat. See what a homie do. <laughs> see, what, see what a homie do with a bat. If I walk out and, t- and I see like three motherfuckers in black suits sitting outside with a sign like, where them fucking leaks All I can at? think about now is what oh. if I got a knock at my door and then they kick the door down and there I am playing Persona 5 two weeks early, sitting on my floor at my coffee table with my blue Yeti. And you know what you say? I bought this legally. Fuck I yourself. Said, hey, listen. I got the receipts. They're the ones you want. Not me. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Man. So, uh, it, it is. It is just frustrating beyond every shadow of a doubt, because what this essentially shows you, like as an American citizen, yeah. is that corporations can just get away with whatever the fuck they want yeah. now, and it, it's considered a part of the business practice. Like in the court of law, they could turn around if he if he even wanted to like go ahead and try to fight this. Uh, This would be a case that would just be so fucking ridiculously hard fought and it would not even take but an ounce of take two's resources. And this comes down to... probably just settle and pay him, honestly. No. You got more money than God, why not? Hell no. If they're going to send motherfuckers to his house, why wouldn't they keep fighting him? Oh, you're right. Like you're talking about if they death if, penalty. If, I'm right. sorry, I was on the wrong spectrum. Exactly. Like you're fucking <laughs> talking about these fucking people. Like they they've got more money than God, and they want more. They got a hit squad. They just hire people to fuck people up now. Are Borderlands you didn't need to take the epic deal. Just saying. Which makes me wonder, like, how is this going to relate? Like, in the grand scheme of it all, I don't know. Like, okay, so Borderlands is a relatively popular franchise. Yeah. I wouldn't put it up there in popularity with, like, any of the other larger first-person shooters. Like, it's not going to make Call of Duty numbers, I don't think. Or even Destiny numbers. No. What I do think is going to happen is that there's going to be a lot of really crazy misinformed gamers who are going to be picking it up because all of their favorite streamers are given the fucking exclusive deals of like, yeah. hey, get on board the Borderlands train. Randy Pritchford might be a piece of shit and Take-Two Interactive might as well just be an evil corporation Hell, that Hobbs and Shaw are fighting yeah, on the fucking that Hobbs and Shaw, yeah. You know? Uh, <laughs> but it's okay because you get to play your stupid gun game now. But and here's how I've been seeing the whole situation is like, Man, do I feel bad for that development team. Hell yes! Man, do I feel bad for Borderlands as a brand. Hell yes! Because I like Borderlands. And those guys look like they're doing good work. Like this, it looks, it still looks, the it, game. No, it looks fantastic. And but it, it makes me feel that like, I was already like, I'm probably not going to buy it because I don't play first person shooters. And now I'm right. like, I'm definitely probably not going to buy it. Yeah. Because it's like, it's like, it's not the level designer's fault. It's not the scenario writer. 
the guy fucking programming all those stupid memes into the story. He looks at the news and he's just as surprised as you or me that fucking the Pitchford Magic Squad is going out. The Magic Hit Squad. Yeah. They're going out with their, their big hats. Because it's, the, because it's the worst fucking way. It's like we've talked about this before, I think, where it's like you want this to fail because subconsciously you want justice. You want to see this corporation yeah. get taken to fucking court, essentially. Yeah. And the best way to do it nowadays is the court of public opinion. Don't fucking pay for it. Unfortunately, corporations don't act like that, and especially since now that we know that Take Two is a bunch of evil fucking bastards, uh, they're gonna turn around and basically just fucking not ever okay another Borderlands, never do this, never do that if it doesn't succeed, and it's a fucking vicious cycle that is yeah. completely like I a hundred like people to the rest of their days will sit there and go, well, we don't need more government in our fucking games. On some level, I would agree if it wasn't for the fact that this is happening now. Yeah. I, I the think moment 100%, a guy shows up at your house, maybe we don't not need, this government. Video games don't need government, government. Yeah. Video games don't need <laughs> government relations, the regulations themselves. What we need to regulate are the fucking corporations who just think that, that, who just do whatever the fuck they want now. They just do, they just literally go ahead and, and just break human rights at this fucking yeah. point. It's human rights transgressions on a fucking, like, micro and macro scale that I, I just can't fu- I can't guys, fucking fathom anymore. Again, I'm really sorry guys, but the 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 cyberpunk is we live in it. We live in it and it la- sucks. And it's it's la- boring. You don't get the cool spider arms. You don't get to download all your songs and podcasts in your brain. No, because it would make you strong. They don't want you strong. They want you dumb. You just got Randy Pitchford showing up at your door ready to groat you with his his sleeve ribbon. Yeah. That he's pulling out. His and you'll ribbon. never die because it just keeps going. And he'll just leave a bunch of flash drives full of Randy nothing Pitchford, but Bell Delphine picks. Randy Pitchford shows up. Wow, that was so specific. <laughs> Randy, <laughs> Ran, Randy Pitchford shows up to your desk. You're working on Borderlands. He leaves his flash drive at your desk. Yep. You don't even pick it up. And then you go home and you're arrested for possession of child pornography. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Oh. Uh, uh, so, God. I, it's a weird situation where it's like, I even feel bad saying, like, just don't support Borderlands. Because, like, that's a huge team of people putting a lot of work and a lot of soul into a game that is being absolutely ruined by higher ups i i know but like can, are we gonna just consistently be held hostage for the rest of our fucking days it's like do you like borderlands not that do fucking you want much. your new dark stalkers then buy the hd collection of the games you already have and i did because i didn't have them so it, it worked for me i think it's a little different in terms of practice i think that's something where it's like a company trying to gauge like okay yeah that's this is a, this is a situation okay. where the company this? and the people and everyone around it that aren't the internal fucking development team are fucking up okay, on a about, scale on that is, is so unbelievable that no one can even fucking catch okay, up. How anymore. about this? Do you want Borderlands Four? We already have your address. <laughs> come, come at me. Come. What you gonna do? I definitely will come. I definitely will not come. I will. I'll be there. <laughs> Just pulling my, my, my sleeve garrote out. <laughs> oh, it's so fucking frustrating, man. I, I, I don't... I, I, I want change, and I don't know how to do it. Yeah. I yeah. want Borderlands, and I don't know how to do it. What do I do? What's the proper option? You don't buy it on Epic Game Store because you don't want to support that shit. You don't buy it new because you don't want to support that shit. What do you want to play Borderlands three? I don't know what you do. I guess you don't care. You just buy your kid's toy. Whatever. I guess go to your friend's house and play his copy. They of make Borderlands. toys for kids. Yeah, we're gonna buy one copy of Borderlands three, and everyone gets two hours before you <laughs> hand it off to the next person, <laughs> and that's it. One copy sold. Oh, man. Um, we'll do Pokemon real quick. Uh, Pokemon. Showed off another cute waifu. Unfortunately, everything else in that game does not look good. Are they Still. of age? Have we gotten to that point where all the people that we're showing and we're being seen? I are... think it's at the point where we've just stopped acknowledging it. Yeah. 
Okay. I imagine the have gym. We got, le- have we gone over that bump yet? I because imagine they the really gym do. leaders have to be, right? Yeah, the gym like, leaders have to be like, like fucking work to that position. Well, no, because Misty. But Giovanni, how does that work? I don't know. No, Misty definitely, in the games, Misty, Misty has to be older. Fucking Misty's fucking 16. Not, Misty's not your friend in the games. No. She doesn't give a fuck about you. No, but she's definitely a babu. Yeah, but she's not 10. Hmm. She can't be 10. Uh, you got to work your way up to be a gym leader. You don't uh, even get your first Pokemon until you're 10. Uh, but then how's the fucking fisherman kid have one? I don't know. That's why you just... What is it? How do you... Well, that's that's why how the, do Pokemon that's why work? The, well, that's why the question of... Uh, exactly. That's why the question of Well, now I'm way age... more confused about... The, the logistics of the Pokemon world rather than if I'm going to jail or uh, not. This is a post-war world, okay? There's oh a lot of crazy God. shit going on. It's in on. a coma. Who gives a shit? Yeah. Pokemon has... It kisses and Gene Simmons isn't Pokemon. Whatever. Yeah. Feraligator isn't. So go fuck yourself, Pokemon company. I agree. I don't like Feraligator, I'll be honest. I, I'm, I'm a Typhlosion man. Cyndaquil, the Cyndaquil, Quilava, Typhlosion line is like the best starter line. Cyndaquil's cool. That's the best line of starters. I'm going to make my stand right here. They're definitely the ones where I felt like I wasn't fucking kneecapped. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I, I, like I, I like these characters a lot. Like, these little, little, little Pokemans little a lot more than I liked every other starter so far. Yeah. Because so. I didn't like Chikorita. Nope. Totodile's cool, but he's just an alligator. Mm-hmm. Well, at that point, he's a crocodile. See, he's a fucking... Pokemon's dumb as shit. Pokemon's don't, dumb. Buy Borderlands 3. Don't buy Pokemon. Oh, but don't. buy Borderlands on the Switch. Off the Epic you, Games Store. And if you don't buy Borderlands, they know where you live. Um, This doesn't look like Gamescom news, but you snuck it in so I wouldn't see it. Uh, apparently, Capcom is sending out emails to Japanese fans to test a mystery, mis- uh, to, to test a mystery Resident Evil game. Yeah, nobody knows what the fuck's going on. Yeah, but uh, you know what they a... aren't sending out? Hmm. They're not sending out goons to break their kneecaps. Because how did you get a copy of the game so early? Yeah, you sent it to me, <sighs> guys. I was there. I went to the store and bought it. it was literally... The release date was three weeks ago. Uh, you I didn't buy it, it at lunch because I was poor. You put out a sale on Steam. You should have bought more. You should, you should have bought it right instead of wrong. <laughs> now I got to take your kneecaps away. <laughs> um, so we don't know anything else beyond it's a Resident Evil game? We have no fucking idea. At first, it was like a bunch of rumors, but there's apparently some sort of uh, fan group that happens. We have the same thing, like equivalent thing over here in, in the U.S. I've never heard of it. I think it's part of the RENet thing. Um, I don't know if you know what RENet was. RENet was a thing that was created for Resident Evil 6 that essentially was, hey, track all your stats for, you know, all zombies killed and com- campaigns completed. And it was basically a way to compete. And uh, it was uh, like they had events that you could participate in every month and you can get like rewards. In your My game. survival horror game? Yeah. Okay. No, cool. Resident Evil 6? Barely. My I've, pushed, I've pushed that game so far out of my brain. Well, like out. Like gone. I don't know how you were. You were balls. You were right there with me, buddy. You were and now balls I'm right deep. out. I'm balls out. <laughs> the street. shallowest my balls have ever been. <laughs> <laughs> They've actually receded. They back receded. In. They are anti Resident Evil Six balls right now. <laughs> they wouldn't know a Chris Redfield from a Leon Kennedy. This is so weird. You were the first. You were telling me like, yeah, this is a fun game. This is great. Yep. And I've moved on. It was a fun game, and then I finished it. I consume the media and then I proceed. Thank God. Anyways, on the prowl. Uh, yeah, not much is known, but I think it's really cool that they're doing it. I wish they were doing something similar over yeah. here because if that was the case, I'd love to hear what like uh, carcinogen and distortion are doing. Yeah, all for it because those are two really prolific speedrunners in the RE community. And that's yeah. as one thing like. I feel like it's the only thing Capcom's fighting game division has gotten right is that they really embrace their like players and like content creators in that sense that I think the rest of Capcom could really capitalize on. Like the Mantra Hunter crew is doing fucking gangbusters in terms of their Iceborne, uh, like their content creation kind of. Uh, but they're getting in touch with like Monster Hunter. Like popular Monster Hunter streamers. Yeah. So like, like Eric's. Oh, cool. So like Eric's and and Six Nine Gaming are. 
uh, being kind of flown out to places all the time, all the time to fucking oh, go cool. and play the game and do. I think they're in like a weird survivalist camp for Iceborne right now. That's fun. That's really I strange. Think. Like it's a really they play it in the woods. Yeah, like uh, or on a mountain, it's, whatever. Iceborne. I hope is. they fight. I hope they kill a real monster at the yeah. end of it. Um, the real monster was themselves. Man, man, yeah, the best game to hunt. That's the last uh, boss of Monster Hunter Iceborne is your party gets into a big open arena and then the health bars from your party members slowly move away and disappear and the camera rotates to face everyone else. P -P -P. Just, like, just like Bloody Palace will do, right? <sighs> right, guys? There's, Virgil's not coming. Co-op's not coming. There's there's it's... Neither am I. The time was there and now it's gone. Feel free to come when you've had enough. But there was never enough. Easy mode is now selectable. So that's happening. Hey, so that's happening. guess what? Umbrella, uh, Umbrella Core you, 2. Before we even fucking... Oh, remember so that? That, that, that fucking game come out? evil on me. Yeah, that, it did. Sure. Okay. It's I like remember, two bucks. I remember playing the beta and then... Much like Resident Evil 6, it vanished. But not just from my mind, but from reality. Yeah, uh, it might as well be dead everywhere. Yeah, so we will be doing a full playthrough of the online. I don't know what that game is, I'll be honest. All right, just say, just say words. Just go ahead. How about these words? Games? No. Games? Gone. No, don't grow past this. I want to know what this fucking story is that you sent to me about Genshin Impact. Oh, you don't know? No. You haven't been keeping up with the China Joy stuff at all? So very, like, I've been tuning in a little bit, and it's I'm. It's crazy to me that, to think that, like, finally, since consoles are back, that a lot of Chinese developers are able to start developing on console again, but a lot of the games that are coming out are, like, baby's first indie title. So it's this weird, kind of cute, really, in general, pretty good, like, No, I've played thing. Genshin Impact. No, I'm not talking about Genshin Impact. I'm talking oh. about China Joy. Oh, okay. So China Joy is this big expo that was going on in China. It's, I mean, it was about, it's like one of the most attended gaming expos ever. And it's just a bunch of Chinese developers showing off their games. They haven't all been great, and they haven't all been winners. But it's very cool that a lot of development teams are getting into making games. It's a start, goddammit. It's a start. And some of them have really strong starts. Um, and some of them had starts elsewhere, but were also there. Like, they had a Rabbids game get shown off for whatever reason. Okay. So the story we're talking about here is that Genshin Impact was announced for PS4. I don't think that was confirmed before. No. I think it was just PC. So, PC and Android. So it was announced for PS4. They showed off a lot more gameplay, a lot more stuff. I personally think the game looks pretty great. It's not an MMO anymore. I don't think it was it ever. It was like a weird dungeon I, no crawler thing. No one knew thing. what the fuck it was because when I started playing it, I was like, this is not an MMO. This isn't even like a dungeon. This is a fucking single player game. Yeah. Like this is a single player game that has like the phone RPG stylings. Like, yeah. It's very, but it's open world. It was a weird like transitional. We're just going to make a game and we don't really know what it is. Yeah. Yet. But now they kind of do. It's an open world RPG fighter thing. Um, but China was very upset. They're very mad. Why? Because Genshin Impact kind of looks like Breath of the Wild. Yeah. Kind of a lot. Yeah. A lot of the UI. I don't know if you've seen the cooking menu. At first, I was like, okay, so we're just going to call every open world cell shaded game fucking Breath of the Wild now. No, really it's what we're straight doing? up Breath of the Wild. And then I saw that cooking menu and I was like, oh. So, yes. Smacks of Zelda here. Um,. I personally think it looks a lot more fun to actually play than Zelda, like the combat and everything. So yeah. I'm excited for it because it's anime action RPG thing. It does cool stuff. But China was not happy. And so you can find a lot of clips of people in massive crowds, like 36,000 people just all collectively surrounding the Genshin Impact booth, middle fingers in the air. And the story that I sent you, because I like to be cute with my stories, was Genshin Impact makes Chinese fans so excited they drop their PS4s as a result of sweaty palms. People were taking their PS4 Pros and just 
football spiking them through the earth. Okay, why? They were so mad. I don't know. Because Sony didn't make this game. So I don't know why you just smack your PS4 into the floor. The, the PS4 oh, didn't do anything. Oh, is this more anything. that Chinese racism bullshit? No. They are apparently just really upset that, like, that there's a game with that was, like, heavily developed in China, I guess. On, on And it's it was definitely the one of the highest profile games there. And that it was so steeped in, like, aping off of other games. Because it's something I've learned a lot more about from... Uh, Zuge, 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 Okay, well, fair, fair enough. I didn't know that was a. It's all lowercase. What that's. You... I mean, that's how I would pronounce it. Just okay, in case. Z huge. Fine. Yeah. We'll go with that. Uh, yeah, Chinese fans are not happy that Chinese games are constantly ripping off other like games. They're not happy about it. And so to see like a high profile game come to PS4 at an event that's like all about Chinese game development be like a a breath of the wild ripoff in big air quotes was very disappointing for them and they took it very hard. But hey, the PS4 didn't do anything. Just don't buy the game. Yeah, how about fucking don't waste your money, you actual idiot. Just don't. like the people who fucking like Take, like, uh, remember when we were on all that Nike shit after with Colin Kaepernick? You already bought the shoes. Burning the shoes is not it going to help. It doesn't change anything! The only thing that happens is, wow, people with that opinion are huge babies. Yep. Huge babies. Yep. So, I put that story on there mostly because it introduced a lot of people to Genshin Impact, and everyone that saw that went, Wow, that's really silly. Game looks kind of cool. Maybe I'll check it out. So hey, net plus for Genshin Impact. But um, I definitely I want to see how, how where it's gonna go because when I played it, it felt a lot like a mobile game that was given. Did it feel like fucking... Honkai Impact? Kinda, yeah. That's... So a lot of so a lot of the the Honk. Have you played Honkai Impact? Before? I have not because it's on a phone. So the the concept behind Honkai Impact is that every character has its own unique play style mm -hmm. and they all have their own skills and stuff like that but you can quick switch between the characters in the middle of combat to kind of uh you know adhere to whatever play style you need yeah in Genshin Impact it's a bit more nuanced than that uh each of the characters represent some form of an element so okay that's if, what, that's what I, the impression I was getting because it, it did show like fire next to your character right wheel. so there's so there's certain things where like uh you get a you get an archer character in the first half and that character has a charge move where you can shoot fire at bramble bushes and allow yourself to go through different parts of the dungeon you want to be able to go for do before. Mm. Um, if you are a, I want to say like a an air user, then you use that for like traversal as well. Yeah. If you have uh, like there's a bunch of spikes, but there's water in the area. If you have a character that has a skill that basically is a, a a straight shot fucking ice skill you freeze all the water in front of you and create a bridge and stuff like that but then also it, it happens in combat where it's like okay you're standing in water and you're uh, a thunder element or a lightning element rather uh, I'm gonna just cast this lightning spell and now every one of the characters or every one of the enemies in the, the puddle is getting fucked up really hard mm -hmm. or I'll use that same puddle to freeze them and then go switch to the other character and then do that uh, so it's got mm. a lot of really cool back and forth like that, um, but in terms of like yeah, it's really shitty that they ripped that off of Anthem though, right? It's really like I'd spike my PS4 too, mostly because it was bricked, and it might as well say be that a brick. Max, Max, basically, I have a, uh, a, a an idea now that Max essentially is my cybernetic Idris Elba. When it comes to me explaining anything, it's because he <laughs> the, because he has a data, HUD, he has a HUD that basically processing. fucking processes how like the optimal sandbag moment that he can just throw in at any time, yeah, and it and it'll it's, work. It's, and the it gears just, are always chugging, always turning, and it, that and it is turns. bullshit. <laughs> Blazing. Uh, um, but the the whole because the story's kind of old. But the main reason I brought this up is to just say check out some of the games they showed off at China Joy. There's a lot of jank. 
there's some really kind of cool ideas. I was personally a fan of AI Limit. I thought it had a lot of cool things going on. It's a little hack and slash robots. Cute anime girl robots. So just just look at the chat enjoy stuff. There's some some weird, of it's kind of cool. There's some weird Destiny-like game I saw there too. I was like, wow, this doesn't look finished. Okay. <laughs> AI. So, <laughs> sorry, I just wanted to read the blurb real quick for AI Limit. Um, you're you're uh, you're in the role of a heroine who must rely on her skill and determination to save a world full of threats and mysteries. Ooh. So you're gonna have to play the game to find out what the mystery is. God, I'm, I'm well call already your, in. Just call up your Scooby Doo bunch. Um. Okay. Is the is this the the is now? Can I say the other word? Game dev or Gamescom is happening. Gamescom. A lot of shit's going down. This is the not Chinese convention. Jeff Keighley apparently has a lot of stuff that he wants to show people. Yeah. Even those companies you don't like are there. Oof. I won't specify which one because odds are you won't respond well to one of these, such as 2K Games or Activision or Bandai Namco Entertainment or Bungie or Capcom or Electronic Arts or Epic Games or Google Stadia or Coach Media slash Deep Silver or Private Division. Is that, Who? Is that just a question mark? Sega, know. Square Enix, Sony Interactive Entertainment, THQ Nordic, Ubisoft, and Xbox Game Studios, which, by the way, includes everyone under Xbox Game Studios. Yes. That's a lot of people yeah. now. It's tons of people. Can't wait for Rare to announce their new platformer, right, guys? So, uh-huh. so uh, Jeff Keighley has basically come out and said, so the, one of the mainstays that's going to happen, it's basically it's his own little presser. Uh Death Stranding's going to have a gameplay presentation, which is insane. I doubt it. Uh, and uh, Sega is going to be announcing a new AAA title at Gamescom. So it's now turning into where we thought before, where E3 is the announcement thing. And Gamescom uh, is, is the... Is here's the, what it actually is. Yeah. Now I think Gamescom is just kind of going more the way of E3 because it's not as fucking controversial. And they also know how to keep their data... In where it needs to be, which we that's a story we fucking completely glossed over that I fucking completely just remembered. What you not hear about that? No, Uh, maybe the 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 fucking people behind E3, I forget the name of the corporation, ended up doxing 2,000 individuals who went there. Yeah, why not? If you were a journalist or or content creator, how shit's just out there now. How else is Take Two gonna figure out where to go to break the kneecaps? Gee, that's what happened. That's what happened. That's where it was. Where it was. Um, yeah, and also Gamescom, you know, it's open to the public. So, like, if you're going to have actual game gameplay stuff to get your hands on, that'd be the place to do it. Final Fantasy VII's got a demo. Cyberpunk has another demo that they're going to be showing off to the public, finally. Do you right. see how many stations they have for Final Fantasy VII? 75. A lot. And you still won't get to play it. Only 3,000 people. Listener. Yeah, only 3,000 people played, uh... Final Fantasy VII and yep. E3, and so. I'm sure there's way more than 3,000 people at E3. There's a, quite a few. So, uh, um, it is what it is. But you'll definitely get a better chance to play it than it was last better time. Better chance, unless you don't live in Germany, in which case your chances are actually significantly less. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, but your chances of fine. Fuck it. Sega's going to announce a new AAA title. That's what I said. Oh, did you? Yeah. You, you were... Gone. I got that one, and then my I- I- Idris Alba brain just shut the fuck off. <laughs> um, it'll probably be a Yakuza related title. Maybe Ishin? Is that what it's called? No, the new one that has the, the new one with the new guy. The new guy, yeah. like the actual like game. That I forget he's what it's in. called. No, I, I think Yakuza Ishin was the is the the samurai, samurai one. one. Yeah. yeah. Um, Hopefully that comes out here soon. They talked about releasing it. I just think they need to release all the Yakuza's in general. Oh, just, just release just them. Fucking just, three through five got ported to. They, um, they're th- obviously making money. Here's the thing, though: those games are fucking long and they're big, and there's a lot of text that needs to be translated. So three and five just got re-released on PS4 in Japan. Going to be a hot minute before we get those because the English translation for those games is bad. <sighs> um, God damn it. And did we do it? Is that everything? Wow, that's everything. Nope, that's not true. I lied. Because there's one more very important story. I want to draw attention to a little Kickstarter for a game that I think definitely deserves 
everybody's attention. And it's on the switch. And it's, it's about bringing a game to to the switch, which I think we can all really. I hate um, that shit eating greeting we can, you have on your face. I, I really I think I, it's going to make a lot of people excited. Oh my god! Um, Here it comes. So I have to ask from the bottom of my heart. Oh. Please help support the Kickstarter to bring Ty the Tasmanian Tiger to the switch. Never before. No. Go down under. No. With the stop, this is the only way. No, this is the only way. I refuse. That you're gonna want to hear this. It's important for kids. Oh wow, that's lewd. For, for kids, this will be the only way they will ever see the Great Barrier fucking Reef. Stop. Are you fucking kidding me? It's the only way. You really just put that. And out it's there. gonna be after a, a big, old. Sexy platypus Max, man gives Max, you the aqua rings. Max, stop. So you can swim really good. Max, please. No. Okay. Well, if you don't want to do that, at least consider picking up Super Monkey Ball Banana Blitz. Banana Split? Ba-ba. They're do they did the HD Ba-ba. remake of Super Monkey Ball, the Wii one. Oh, well, and it yeah, comes out that. October. That's a good game. And there's one more thing I do have to say. <sighs> is that and this is related to you. Um, I don't know when it's going to be or what time it's going to be at, but Google is staging another conference to embarrass themselves with for Stadia. For Stadia. I don't know. So August 17th, or at, le- at the very least, a little bit after, tune in to Hipsters on Purpose to see our, our, our hot takes on this budding new technology that has industry vets saying... Oh, and huh? And is that gonna wow. work? <laughs> Don't worry. Comcast will make new cables for Google Stadia to make sure that your game will work, unless we cancel the service or there's a thunderstorm or you can't afford internet or you can't afford your Stadia subscription. Or you exist. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, not on the podcast, it's your boys, Phil and Max. Max and Phil, we're in the mix. Leaving your ass after that bullshit. (laughs) Hey, Max, what's going on on the Twitch channel? Because YouTube is is not dead, but kind of dead. YouTube, we ran out of stuff for now. We got to make more stuff. But we know. <gasps> Not that. Mm. Not. Oh, fuck. Mm. I did say that, huh? You did say it. All right. I'm considering going back on a few things. You are backing down harder no. than you've ever had. No. What I was going to say is I, th- I, I, I am thinking that we might do more stuff like the Detroit playthrough, but have it be new, but have it be YouTube exclusive. Rather than be streamed, but that's stuff we got to talk about. Okay, yeah. Because it'd be a lot easier to record or slash do during a time where it's not peak Twitch hours. Um, yeah. On Twitch, at the very least, um, by Sunday, I think Sunday night, I'm going to be finishing Toho Luna Nights. And then, when the fuck is the 13th? Is that Tuesday? I think that's a Tuesday. Tuesday, we'll be playing Nightwolf Mortal Kombat. 11 on PS4. And everything else, it's a mystery. Who knows? Also, if you're wondering where the Metal Wolf Chaos playthrough is. I can't afford it right now. Yeah, we're so broke. Didn't donate. Sorry, guys. My if bad. You, you know, not, to, not to throw that out there. We'll How badly do you want the Metal Wolf yeah, playthrough? If, do you want me to skip lunch this week? I do like you guys. Not that much. If you want Metal Wolf, you gift it to one of us, we'll play it. If you sure. don't, then you gotta wait. You gotta wait. And I'm not. That's, that's not like a. That's not like a. Oh well, you're just not gonna play oh, it. No, we'll definitely play. Wait it. a second. No, I know how we. They must have heard that the podcast was over. They oh. just wanted to come down. You know, that was the, the studio. That was terrifying. Audience. That was really Holy terrifying. Shit. Our neighbors were loud. Um, I couldn't no, tell if it was I know yells how we... or laughs or. I was gonna say 
I know how we get Metal Wolf, but you're going to have to work for it. Oh, no. What do you mean? Thanks for listening, everybody. What does that mean? Tune in next time for more wacky video game talking shenanigans. Are you fucking... What are you talking about? Don't fucking... <laughs>